versus Liquid. Prepare oh, thank you so much, Slacks. We do get into it. Game number one here between Liquid and N3. A best of three lower elimination bracket here. We've got John X5, we've got Gunner, Dota. Gunner, you're looking very handsome as always, but how are you feeling? 70 minute game, 80 minute game. Arc Gordon, Naga, one side. There's Enigma, you have to be scared. We're breaking records, Gunner. We're breaking records here today. Yeah, we definitely are. It's going to be maybe the longest series, maybe if you know if all the games kind of go the same way, would be really interesting to see. Of course, as we heard from Blitz, Liquid not looking to really play that long con. They, they want to come out fast here. They want to get out aggressive. Do you feel like they have enough to be aggressive here, Gunner? On the side of Liquid? Yeah. Yeah, I think most teams like playing a little slow with the Lush in the early game. You get the Bloodstone and that, that's kind of your go time. So in terms of laning stage, no, I think they're going to be very stable in the lanes. No one's going to make many moves. Enigma wants to sit in his lane as well. But once they get this probably level level 8 timing on Lush, he goes to farm a lot. Maybe the Lifesaver will rotate to the Enigma. It's mostly probably on the Lifesaver, honestly, to do a lot of the early moves. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like the timing is for that life skill then? Well, any specific itemization? Maybe you kind of go away from the armlet here, you go for maybe a quicker Maelstrom or something? We've been seeing uh, a lot of like Mjolnirs and BKBs on the life skill, especially for Snaga. I think it happened uh, yesterday. I don't remember what happened with the player was, but it, it's a lot of BKBs, which is pretty interesting because you would always think of this hero as having a built-in BKB, so you don't need it. But it's just the ability to fight and constantly have a BKB for almost like 20 seconds yeah. with the rage. It's just so much space that gets given out. Of course, uh, taking a look at the mid coming out here for Stormstormer up against Mike. Uh, Leshrak up against the Arc Warden. And, you know, me and Mike, we've seen a lot of Arc Wardens out yes, in Asia. Yes, we have. Uh, Arc Warden, Mike, your favorite hero. Uh, my favorite hero, indeed. I mean, I hate this hero so damn much. I mean, it just drags out the game so much. And I mean, you were saying it was a decent pick here, Gunnar. I know you were kind of scared we might have another very, very, very long game. Well, what are you thinking about the mid lane, though? Against Mikke on the left track, who should have that inherent advantage? I think probably it's fairly even. Both of them have nukes, so they're just going to secure creeps and not think about it. And as well, both of them walked into the matchup very comfortably. Obviously, the Arc Warden's picked into the Lesh, so he knows his matchup, he knows it's mid. But Mickey also had the opportunity to you know, pot off the Lesh if he's too scared of the matchup. So they, I think it should be pretty even. Both people are going to farm. There's there's opportunities at level 6, mostly on the Arc Warden side. This level 6 timing is really strong with getting two sets of all your spells, having a support rotate. But we'll probably see Mickey just rotate out of the lane once he's 6. Well, let's talk about the top lane as well. Matama Man and Sania are going to be against Toby and Kataomi. So the Pulse 3 Nagasaran and the Pulse 4 Tiny against this Lifesteal are Lich lane. John, what do you think? thinking about this lane. Like top lane, do you think one side has the advantage here? Do you think it goes the other way? I think it's fairly good for Liquid. I mean, down the line, you're going to have the cross shield to just kind of hold Matumba up front. Toby's not going to be able to be as aggressive with his right look ass, and Katawumi's going to need levels to really kind of gap close. What I'm interested to see is really the itemization of Toby. We heard the panel. They've been going for utility, you know, raid pack, pipe of insight, stuff like that, just to keep you alive in the middle of these fights. And that can really slow down Liquid here. I mean, they do have damage, but it's mainly on Mickey. It early, early on, it does feel like it does take a little bit more time for that life to really ramp up outside of just staying alive for a long time. So I think that's what Entity's likely just gonna look. Get those utility items up in Naga and just run from there. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Naga being picked pretty early in this tournament. And a lot of the time it's actually flexed to support her offline, mm. like probably majority of the time. And you would always think to yourself, why would you pick this hero that's always known for, you need three, four items, you need Manta, <laughs> Diesel, Scotty, a heart, and you're like, okay guys, I'll show up, I'll stop farming, I'm gonna fight. But a lot of it's now that pushing lanes is very important to a lot of teams. And Naga, her spells are so good that she can push lanes with no items, or little to no items. And the way that fights are being broken up now is there's a lot of six, seven, eight second fights where you have the BKBs, you have the big Mars Arenas, you have Black Hole in this game, for instance, where that's where a team needs to win the fight. The fight needs to end there. And with the new shard, which is that, it used to be the old act, yeah. where it's the healing on the song. You kind of have this ability to reset the fights very easily in a lot of games and just, you know, play for in this game, they have the Arc Warden. Arc Warden loves long fights. And so all they have to do is survive the early, like the initial fight of Liquid in the mid game to late game. And, they should have the advantage. Well, talk to me about that. In fact, hold that thought, because top lane, there is going to be a bit of an avalanche, but it's not going to lead to much. Talk to me, talk me about that last lane. I and mean, we've got the bolt lane as well. Uh, I believe we do Dyer's have the Enigma and Dyer's the Spirit attack. Breaker here against, of course, the CM and the Slaughter. What are you thinking about this one? Like, is there an advantage for either side? Should, I feel like Pure should have it over Boxy, but I, I suppose it can go either way with the Enigma being against them as well. I was surprised that the Naga didn't go bot, actually. I thought Naga is generally good versus Enigma. Uh, but they probably think the Crystal Maiden, now with the nerfs to the Eidolons where they have less magic resistance, can probably help deal with them earlier better. And 
I think it's just kind of how they wanted to play their heroes in the game, and they don't care the lane as much. Enigma also just generally wins the lane, so you can't be too sad if you lose the lane or it's a little rough. But even now, he's up 400 gold, so the early lane is going in Entity's favor. Is it worth the trade-off, though, of not having the Slaughter up against the Life Sealer early on, just to be a little bit more aggressive up top? That's I, Honestly, that's probably the, the bigger difference into the lanes. I thought the Slaughter was picked just to lane or as a Life Sealer. But again, they probably also just are comfortable playing the heroes in the style. They're comfortable playing in their lanes. So there's not much reason, unless you think that it's, you know, a massive difference. They, I think both of the lanes are just comfortable playing, and it'll fix what they want for the mid game better. Radiance bottom tower. The vision being attack. placed here in the mid lane. Boxy with a cheeky little rotation, just trying to keep tabs on Stormstormer. I, I suppose against the Arc Warden as well. This is you, you want to try and take this man down early on if you can, right? Because as, as you get into the mid and the late game, obviously with the Tempest double, it becomes very hard to catch him. So it seems like Boxy's already kind of setting up his bot lane. There's going to be a bit of harassment out of the Fishman. In fact, a charge as well. But how lucky can you get? He does get one bash, but that's going to be about it. Zai, he will rotate onto Boxy. See they go, or rather pure they go, but pure, he's just gonna just run away very easily with the sprint. Yeah, Arcorn's one of the heroes, it's similar to a Tinker, where he's very slow and you want to run at him mid and kind of stop his timings. Even now you see he has a Midas queued up before boots. So anytime you see that, you always are like, okay, kill him, kill him, don't give him Midas, don't give him the Midas timing. And Leshrac's one of the best heroes to rotate mid towards, he's very fast, he does a lot of damage. So we'll probably see some early rotations, I'd say in the next minute or two, where Boxy's going to try to kill the Arc Warden at least once in the early game. It does feel like you need that, right? Like, uh, we, we talked about the timings again, and we heard Blitz. They do want to play faster here on Liquid. They've got the foundations to get that done. For Entity's end, I mean, how fast do you really want to take this game? You, you don't want to take this game fast. <laughs> Whenever you pick Arc Warden, honestly, the, the biggest timing on Arc Warden is level 25 talent. As sad as it sounds, maybe as exciting as it sounds for the arena. Excuse you. You want to play for this uh, cooldown reduction town at level 25. That's your big, big timing. That's when the game gets very hard. Boxy. So, bit of a charge mid lane. He was getting ganked to be fair, so he might not complete the charge. Though I say that he's still going for this. Stormstormer could be in a bit of danger. They do land the follow-up stun. Mickey, does he have the damage? Stormstormer? No, he's the one to get the kill. Fishman with a great rotation out. Mickey, he's gonna feed his own life away as well. Complete disaster here in the mid lane for the side of Liquid. Yeah, the instant TP's in, they managed to share that damage coming out, and Storm Stormer manages to just run away in the nick of time. Two kills for the trouble, and we talked about Liquid going fast. They tried to dodge that gank and transition to a kill, doesn't quite shape up that way. He also has really long mana on the Lesh, so his, uh, his ult, I think, stopped because of mana, so they lost that little bit of damage. I think one more tick of the ult, the uh, Arc dies, even if he has more mana to do the toggle, but just unfortunate. A really nice, really nice rotation, Entity just... I think this team plays fast. Pure is in danger now. Maybe Liquid trying to return the favor as Boxy getting very lucky with the bashes. Can he find another? Not quite yet. Pure going to go for a run. Boxy, he'll try to chase, but with the sprint, it's a little bit too hard to keep up. So they are going to back off. I suppose at the very least, you are forcing Pure to have a, maybe a little bit of a slower game here in the slot. Yeah, he's going to have a slow game, but... Again, he's not really the win condition in this game at all. It's all in the arc. They pick the starter as a hero that will just run in, stun, and get vision for the arc. And if he dies, it sucks. Pure. He's dying right now. He certainly is. A couple lucky bashes out, but Pure again going to be able to run. I believe that was two bashes in a row. Meanwhile, top lane, Toby now going to be in danger. He's got a lot of armor on that Naga Siren, but they are still chopping through. Matumba not giving up. Toby, he'll try to keep juking around that tier one tower, but there is no help coming. Matumba able to secure his first kill of the game. Yeah, it's, it's a nice kill to pick up, right? It's, it's a lane that already feels pretty free for from Tumbaman. 48 to 11, not really being contested. I think the one thing for Liquid as well, focusing so much on pure down bot, is that those rotations mid that we saw them attempt at least once a while ago, Radiant they're not trying again anytime soon. So you're giving a lot more room for Radiant's that Mark Warden as you're seeing here, Gunner. And Storm Stormer, he's going to have a good path towards that Midas. Yeah, the biggest entity right now, I don't think the side lane cores really matter to the overall game plan. They're, they can do their role with low farm, bad games. They just have to, you know, create vision, create space, push lanes. Arc Warden will do everything. He'll kill everyone who do all the damage. Mid lane, Katomi, he's the first target, and they do find it, but now Mickey could be in danger. He does back his way out. They are not going to pursue. It seems like Katomi is going to be the only casualty, and of course it's the mid laner in this uh, Tricar saying that the side lanes don't matter, Gunna. I wouldn't have expected any less from you. <laughs> the mids are going to be the star. I think even on Liquid, the Mickey, his bloodstone timing really big. Also, he picks up a casual cloak. We've seen that a lot as the torments developed. 
where there's so much magic damage people are picking in the early game. This game is the Arc, Tiny, and Crystal Maiden, where just having this casual cloak, there's so many plays I've seen where they have 50 health left, 100 health left, and it's purely because of this cloak. And it's so cheap, it's just a really nice value item. You are. He's rotated up top, they are at least gonna find the Lich here, so it's a decent pick up onto Insania. Question is, can they find the big one? Can they get Matumba Man? Not quite. He'll go for an Infest, quick stun away, and he'll just run his way back, perhaps into the jungle while Boxy is going for a charge up top, but naturally is gonna have to cancel. There's four heroes up, but there's absolutely no point going up. Yeah, and I like seeing this kind of movement out from Entity. They're trying to go a little bit quicker. At the same time, this is so much space for Storm Stormer mid. I mean, Liquid have not been able to focus down this Arc Warden. Oh, Midas fully up, Maelstrom coming up next. You've got the Tempest double. The farm will rack up here. Yeah, it's one of the things where both of the safe lane carries want to sit in their lanes as long as possible. That happens every game. And it's generally, it's kind of a test of chicken. It's whether you're going to be the carry to rotate first, and you have to make sure the move's successful. A lot of the time it is, but those times where you leave your lane too early and it's bad, it gets really bad. So you're always going to wait for trying to bet the perfect opportunity. Pure makes the right call. He goes top, gets the Lich. He kind of, he loses his entire bot, but now he kind of has space to farm. Just go straight to that jungle and try to build up and still give Toby a little bit room. This is the one thing with Nog as well that you mentioned here, Gunner, right? You just send out the illusions, you can scout out, you can clear out camps, clear out waves without too much commitment. Although you're not doing too much to stop the lights over there. Nice little cancel from Kataomi. Boxy trying for a charge, but really just wanted to zone him out for Mikkei to be able to pick up the power rune as now. Mikkei being slowed up quite a lot. They're going to move back in. This could be very dangerous for Liquid. Boxy, he's trying to help out and he does take the toss away from Mikkei as they keep going. Kataomi. He's the one to drop in Mikkei. Look at this Giga Chat. He'll just keep going in against four heroes. He just doesn't care. But it oh. may cost him his life. And eventually it will. But here comes Zai oh. with the black hole. He wants pure at the very least. Chain Frost out as well. It will be enough. Who won that team fight? It's Entity, right? Arc Warden doesn't die. Everything on Entity is on the Arc Warden right now. And. Every time you don't kill him in the fight, he gets a kill or two, he survives the fight, you're just building up, getting XP. That's all that matters, it's all the XP. So every time he lives, it doesn't matter if he gets gold, doesn't matter about anything, he just needs the levels on this hero. And Adam, you mentioned as well, right? Battle of the mid laners, you managed to find Mika on that last track, stalling out that Bloodstone timing. So you're getting a ton. And again, all the movement out from Entity has just been forcing Liquid into this really weird position. They're having to respond to these side lanes, but the mid, it just feels like Storm Storm is getting way too much at this point. At the same time, Liquid is playing for their timings with both their one and two or top of the network right now. So Liquid, they're up 3k gold. We're talking about this, you know, disaster right now. The entity getting all of their timings, but at the, Liquid, Liquid's having a good game. It's just that there's always this looming fear when you pick Arc Warden of, is it, is it too late? Are we gonna, have we ended the game? We hear in the last series, it was, we're gonna win in 30 minutes. And as we saw after 30 minutes, they didn't win, so the game got hard. And in this game, again, it's just it's just the 25. That's the big timing. So what you're telling me is we should delete our quarter from the game. <laughs> I I never said those words out of my mouth. I mean, you want to play it, don't you? I Disgusting. I like I like 20 little you know level 25 60 minute games occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> if it was a staple, maybe I would agree with you more. <laughs> Here we go again, charge up. They've got the Infest Bomb this time at Tumba. They're gonna find Pua on that pause one slider. Pua surely has no way out. He'll pop the sprint, but still slowed up here by Matumba. Will go down. Fishman, he was also spotted, but they aren't gonna bother trying to chase that deep. They'll be happy with the slider. Yeah, and it's really good to see Liquid recognize that time. Early armlet already up on Matumba. Number one in that first two pointed out there, Gunner, and just play with that combination. Infest then charge forward, give Mika some space, and start to get some action on the map. Yeah, the, the panel is talking about this Infest Bomb, which Last year kind of moved away from this in the, you know, 2015, 2016, there's a lot of the Puck life stealer. Every game, your entire life was just infest him, jump out on a blink, get a kill. And we moved away to being more of a body, but I think now that everyone just dies so quickly right now to all these jumps that it, it's kind of becoming the standard these days. Yeah, I think that's the one thing we're going to have to keep seeing out from Liquid. How often can they get that done? How often can they force Entity to play this game even slower? And they probably want to. Uh, the big thing right now is, again, you are seeing that build up for Liquid. 4k up, despite that back and forth on the mid. Mika, still on a good path towards that Bloodstone here. It's all, it's all about the kind of item timings for Liquid. On the side of Entity, it's XP. On the side of Liquid, it's gold. They want to get the probably Maelstrom, even maybe Mjolnir on the Lifesaver and a BKB. They want to get the Wraith Pact on the Enigma. They want to get the Bloodstone on the Lesh. Whereas Entity, again, their only big hero that it really, really matters that's going to win the game is the Arc Warden. Right. So Liquid has these three heroes that all going to give and take. What They get a timing, they help the others get timings, but the
the Sardar and the Naga, all they do is just try to make space, help team fight, and just everything's for the arc order. Well, this is where things start to really escalate, I feel like. You talked about the Midas, but now the Maelstrom up as well on the arc, so he's just going to really scale out of control. Now, you, you talked about, you know, that panic of, is it too late? Not quite yet for Liquid, but... It seems like the pace of the game needs to speed up maybe just a little bit here from Liquid to try and slow this man down. So as you said, it's a full protect one. You don't care, it's all about the arc. Just make sure he stays alive, gets the XP, hits that level 25 mark, and then, well, then you're not playing Dota anymore. No, playing the arc warden game. Yeah. yeah, it just changes completely. I think the one thing for Liquid right now is they're also starting to go into some good utility coming out from Zai. Great pack pretty much done, fully assembled up, so they can try to go for these fights, try to prolong them a bit more, survive through. They've got some good durability coming out, and that could be one of the times. I mean, you're also almost done with Nika. At least you have the Soul Booster up, so it's going to be a lot more durable as well if he does get jumped on. Oh, full Bloodstone. So they're going to smoke up. They're going to, again, Liquid just uses timings. They get the item, they go, they smoke up, they fight. So they're going to look for, try to get a kill. Again, they, they want the arc. Dyer That's the goal. And he's been in this mid lane area, so you'll see them wrap around mid or the tower. At the least, they want this tower. A good read. From the storm, from the arc warden, he does back off at the right moment as Fishman is the one to tank the gank. You'd argue that's good positioning, right? Like, just in fact, hold that thought because Kataomi, he might be in danger as well. They may just find a second as the nether strike. Massive range up from Boxy, finding a second target, and they should take him down. No problem. Matumba, he'll be the one to take both kills. They'll even find a mid T1 tower out of this, perhaps. This tower is really important just for the amount of map it gives. Uh, because Arc Warden wants to sit, he wants to farm waves and he wants to farm this, these safe camps. And every time you take the tower, he kind of gets less and less map. So he requires more and more lanes, which he takes away from his team. Anytime you give him safe farm, he'll take it. And then his team also gets farmed. But this is where the, his, his net worth is going to go up and his team is going to go down. And you're going to, as you can see, the top four, three of them are liquid. And one of them is Entity. <laughs> yeah, it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger, all the differences. And you can see that gap already between Storm Stormer and the rest of his team. At least the 2k gap. Pretty big, considering how well, much more well-balanced it is on Liquid's end. And it, it's going to get a little bit tougher for Entity to kind of maintain control. I mean, you are getting that build-up slowly but surely onto Toby here on the Naga as well. He does at least have the Hood of Defiance going into the Orchid for some... Uh, a little bit more control coming out. Is there anything else from Entity that can maybe help them match up against Liquid's timings? It's all about how they take the fights. They want very slow fights. They don't want them to be bursty, so probably they don't have the best follow-up for a song, but I would say something like a song into like a tiny combo and a hero, you kind of kite the fight out and you get a lot of spells. The Arc Warden still will do damage the whole game. He does a lot of damage, a lot of magic, but he can't ever get jumped. So they just need to play these really long range fights, pokey. Even Sardar's not too bad at it. He does so much damage in a jump in one or two hits with the bash that they're hoping just get one kill, get out, and just, you know, the game gets delayed by a minute. Delay the game, delay the game, delay the game. That's all it is. It's just about delaying. Smoke up from Entity. I mean, they're going to rotate down towards the bottom side here with their starter CM. Boxy's actually going to charge in with the SMS bomb once again. Kataomi is around. That's the big target, though. They found Storm Stormer, and they're going to take the kill. But can they get their way out? Matumba, he'll also get caught here by Pure and does get shredded by the slaughter. It's Boxy. He'll go for a run, but the Courier's following him. The Courier's just giving the information they need. Boxy, though, he is too fast. Or is he? They try to find him, but Pure's off the mark with the blink. Uh, a little unfortunate, he had the clarity on the courier, so it had the slow from consumables. <laughs> so I wasn't able to perfectly follow him, but it was a it was a nice play. Yeah, and I think that's also the blink reveal coming out from Pure right there in that instant smoke. They managed to get the good angle. They, they lose their they lose their arc warden, but they at least find a punishment onto the life. So you were kind of slowing him down just a tad bit. Although I say slowing down, Matomba is still massive here. Yeah, and he's going for the shard next. I've been really liking the new shard, how it works. It's it's so much cast range, it's so much life steal that you give to all your teammates. Even the Lesh, I like it so much with Lesh Rack Life Seer, because you put it on a target, it'll keep bouncing with all the AoE damage, he'll keep life stealing, life stealing, and he just gets an extra two or three bloodstone effectively in the fight. Roshan is going down the way of Liquid, no contest quite yet from Entity. Doesn't seem like they're quite well aware it is happening. Roshan, I mean, it's getting way too low now. They haven't got the time anymore to try and contest this one. So first Roshan of the game, going to go the side of Liquid. They'll be very happy with that. Looks like it was uh, Mikke who takes the Aegis. Naturally, the Leshrac really enjoys that reset. Uh, happy days for Liquid. Now with this Aegis, you'd assume you can keep this pace going. Yeah, it's the first stages of the game is generally just about pacing and gold. So Liquid's goal of this is they're 6k gold right now. They're going to go maybe like 8, 9k, depending on 
and entities just survive the ages, don't give up too much. Don't worry about towers because the first ages doesn't matter too much. It's about the second ages that both teams are looking at is this is our go time, we have to go. So entities probably mentally, even though it's first right now, they're mentally prepping, all right, what are we doing in 10 minutes? Well, the next one spawns, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna fight this? He's not gonna be 25, he's level no. 13. So what are they doing at this 20, 30 minute mark where Liquid is prepping to end the game with the second ages. Then at that point, you're gonna be seeing a lot of items coming out from Liquid. Like Zai's probably gonna have his blink in less time than that. You're just gonna be finishing up that full shard and Matumba getting that additional life still off. And the BKB is gonna be up for Mika soon. And it doesn't feel like they have any good answers for that prolonged spell immunity, especially as you talk about down the line, once Matumba has his own BKB, I mean that massive duration for him, it's all down to just pure on the Slardar. I think Liquid right now just feels very comfortable with how the pace of the game is going. And Entity, you know, in the back of their head, they're still thinking that it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, but you're always worried if you're not the Arc Warden, because you're always like, I, you have to make sure that you're, that you're, they have the tough job. He's the one who's just like, all right, don't worry guys, just trust me, I got this game. And everyone else has to be like, all right, what do we need to do to make sure that it's all going according to plan right now? And oh, I think the way they use the starter right now is really nice. Got to Omi, nice avalanche away. Still Nether Strike, massive range once again from Boxy. The Katomi with a nice toss back, but Matumba, he's gonna be there with the slows. You've got Fishman around to try and help out, but in the end, he really just can't do much through the rage of Matumba. Is this a bot T2 tower to go down? It does seem like. Yeah, they're gonna use the Glyph, but I don't think Liquid has anything to fear. Entity doesn't want to force his fight, and they actually don't Glyph it. Oh, interesting. The first tier two would have gotten a reset, maybe just stall out a bit. Not the biggest thing in the world. It's not too big of a deal. The, the worst is when you don't get a reset the glyph and you glyph the tier two, and that's when it leads into maybe your tier threes get a hit, maybe you lose all of your outer tower. So at least now they still. It's pretty much the same, it just the game is six seconds faster, which yeah, not the worst. Not the worst, yeah, although it does feel like for Entity, every second does count, right? You're still trying to build up for Storm Stormer. He is at the point where he has the blink and the Maelstrom, but still miles off from that 25 talent where it does get ridiculous. If you're an entity now, I mean, you mentioned it, right? You're looking for what you're gonna do by the next Aegis. You're looking how to enable Storm Stormer to hit those spikes. What are we looking for from them? They're gonna have this blink on Kataomi soon, and it is up, but that's timed with Mika's own BKB. They're, they're hitting a lot of timings on Entity soon. The Orchid's gonna come out for Toby. BKB's gonna come out for Pure. The Blink just finished, as you said, on the Tiny. So the others are hitting timings, and Ark can play with his own team timings. He has so much range and damage that they're gonna kind of hit this maybe ball where they will force a fight into the Aegis and be confident. But on the side of Liquid, they're actually hitting their own timings as well. Boxy almost has a full BKB. He actually has the full BKB right now on the Spirit Breaker, which is, this is where you see the uh, kind of difference, I guess, in terms of one team's being ahead and one team's other. A lot of it also comes down to the supports. You see that it's been 20 minutes and he just picked up the blink on Tiny, and on the other side, he's up 2,000 gold on the Spirit Breaker and has a BKB. Yeah, so it's gonna feel a bit tough to kind of close out. And that's something with the support Tiny, right? Like that blink timing just feels so pivotal, and when you manage to only grab it after the initial BKBs come out, it can feel a little bit rougher. And that's him playing with the Philo Stone that they've had for a few minutes now. So it's just been a little bit slower to, for Kataomi. He has been copying the ganks, and he's 0 4 5. He has been kind of making that space for the team. Yeah, he, he made oh. the choice uh, to go phase boots, which is generally if you want to make a lot of early moves and not force the blink and play with your team. But unfortunately, it didn't really end up working out except for that first TP play. Give me a rough estimation, you two. What's the time? Like, give me a time in the game where this Arc Warden's a problem. What, what, what is the exact time? I want predictions. Exact time you on the clock. First. I don't want your level 25. I want yes, exact, time. exact time. 42 minutes in the clock. I was going to say 43. Oh, there you go. Okay. Very close. See what happens. <laughs> See which one of you is right. <laughs> Entity grouped up. May go for a smoke. Chances are you don't really want to. Just group around Storm. Stormer, make sure he remains safe. Keep that farm going. Liquid, they have taken over that Radiant Triangle. So it's going to be a pretty, pretty nice bit of farm denial here inside of Liquid, but and it doesn't seem like they're panicking Entity. They're more than happy to drag this out. I also know we, we talked a lot about how Entity's kind of doing in there, but, uh, and like how they're behind, but they are actually very good at defending this high ground. They have Tiny and they have an Arc Ward. Both these heroes are amazing at defending the high ground. They have a Naga Song to reset if Liquid goes a little too far. So Liquid is 
they're not too happy about going enforcing high ground until they're 100% sure that it's going to be good. Yeah, the tools are there on Entity to kind of stall out. We've seen already from Entity's one game, they can stall these games out. You are. He's going to drop. Very easy pick up here by Matumba once again. Just the, the Infest Bomb proving to be so powerful here by Liquid. Pure, again, he's the pause one, but doesn't really care. He's just buying space for his mid laner. And it seems like Liquid, well, they are going to find a Tempest Stubble, but that's not going to be the real thing. Get a bit of gold here for Mickey, but that's about it. The gold injection's always nice. You are kind of working on the on what you're looking for with the Aegis, right? Gunner mentioned use first Aegis to get two, 3k more gold. They are up seven to eight from that six to 4k lead they had a while ago. So they've worked the map really well here on Liquid. They're starting to shut down Entity from getting into that jungle, from trying to reach forward in those lanes because of how early some of those tier ones fell. It's just a little bit more challenging now for Storm Stormer to just farm. And as, as you mentioned, Gunner, he's just eating all the farm now. It, it, the, the farm is still there for Storm Stormer, but it's starting to feel like Pure and Toby are really being sacrificed for that. His BKB is so slow. It's going to be probably a 25 minute BKB on your carry, which is not the happiest. That's, that's why he keeps dying. He's just getting run down by the life sitter. And even when you when he goes on the top, you can see how confident Liquid is just walk away. They see all the TPs, they get the one kill and starter. Fishman is just one hit away from dying to the life sitter because he's going to be so slow, but Liquid just walk away. They don't feel the need to make anything. They don't need a bigger win than they're getting right now. They just take a small win here, take a small win there, and just walk away. Well, save Katomi and Fishman this time, though. I say that, Nether Strike, Foxy, not going to go all the way, but does see Toby. He might try for the Naga Siren, but does end up thinking better of it. In fact, Ensnare is out from Toby. Just hold down the Leshrac for a little bit, but it's not going to mean anything. They allow Mika to walk away. Liquid once again controlling that Radiant Triangle. And Entity still sticking as a group. It's, it's starting to feel like you're finding a lot more for Liquid to play with here, though. Blink up on Zai, Aether Lens as well, a little bit easier to reach with that Black Hole. You do have really good cancels here from the side of Entity, so it's not exactly the easiest to just go in without any protection or spell immunity at all. But the options are available for initiation from Liquid once they feel like they've got that foundation to try and pierce through for more objectives. Yeah, this Enigma, he's early picked, so... His black hole is generally, generally early picked. He's not picked for the black hole anymore. He's picked for the lane, the Malefice, and all the ores he's able to buy. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes, he's, he goes up a BKB, but I wouldn't be surprised if he just buys the shard and just stuns heroes. Because he, he doesn't need to do anything in these fights. He just needs to exist and scare Entity away from grouping up, clumping up, and being able to kind of protect each other. Because once you do that, that's how you get black hole, and that's how the game ends. Oh, there's that Gleipnir up. This is where things get scary for me. I see that Gleipnir, I, I get shivers up my spine. It's, it's so hard, just the Tempest double all over the map, able to solo you once he roots you with that Gleipnir up. And see what Storm Stormer does done again. You guys kind of mentioned it's about 20 minutes away from him feeling completely busted. So we're going to give it a bit more time, but it does feel like it's, it's getting to that point where I, even I'm getting a little bit scared now for Liquid. And you can also see at the exact same timing, it's like Gleipnir, BKB finished on Slaughter, Pipe finished on Naga. All these timings are kind of lining up. Fishman has a lot of wards queued up, so we'll see those timings coming out soon. Uh, but this is where Entity is going to try to pick a one hero off, maybe two, and then just call it a night, go away, keep farming. They just want the kills to delay the game, whereas Liquid want the kills to secure the next objective. Yeah. With the smoke up, uh, Matumba does read it while backing off. I am curious, Gunnar, we had a little bit of conversation in the back room about this, but Toby's queuing up the Ags here. How, how do you feel about that ensnare and that uh, real in in this kind of game? I don't even think of the real in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if real in got removed, I don't know if the Ags would change at all. Oh, this is dangerous. Foxy, he's going for a big charge. There's a lot of heroes from Entity around. He'll still go for Fishman. They might find the CM. Entity, do they want to try and force a fight? It doesn't seem like it, but this is a big timing. You talked about the second Roshan. It is now available in Liquid. They've spotted it out. Now, this is when the game starts going downhill very, very in Liquid favor. They're going to get Char, they're going to get Aegis, and Entity hasn't really hit their timing. The Arkhorn, even, even level 18, really big timing. You almost have 100% uptime on the double. But he's level 15, just hit 16. So this is probably where Liquid's gonna want to look to hit, you know, maybe Mega, or not Mega Creeps, but, you know, Super Creeps in the mid lane, take out their racks, take out bot racks. At least one side is probably gonna be the next goal. 
they're going to be able to do that really well as everything's lined up. They find Toby. They are going to find Toby. They don't want that Song of the Siren available in this team fight. In comes the Tempest Double, but it does end up expiring. Liquid, they've... Oh, that's a oh. big stun out from Pure. It's on to three, but there's no follow-up to it. In they go. Oh, it's a Boxy, but he's got the BKB up. Song of the Siren's there, but Boxy, he just oh. keeps going. Oh, with the Tumba, they'll find at least one. And that's going to be Pure gone. Can you keep this fight going? That doesn't feel like it. Great first BKB use out from Boxy, interrupting that fight, isolating Pure, and still they managed to secure that Aegis. So everything Gunner said, they're going to be able to start targeting some tier two, start looking at some lanes of racks to take out, and really build into that advantage. Really start to choke out. Maybe not Stormstormer. He's still going to be able to reach out into some lanes, but really the rest of the team is just going to start suffering on entities. There's also really unfortunate timing for Etsy, as you said, that Tempest double times out. There's a 28 second downtime where he has no Tempest double. So Stormstormer TP's mid. He's sitting there in the trees watching the fight the entire time. You watch his ult tick down because he doesn't want to go with this hero. He wants to use his illusion to be able to fight. But by the time Pure's dead, he gets the illusion. They don't have the... It's just very unfortunate how it timed out. Yeah, it's just not quite shaping up in the NCT. Mind you, they still have a lot of time to play for. Liquid looking to start to speed that game up. They've got the full Basher up now on Matombo as well. So he's got some control coming through here. And it looks like the Mjolnir isn't too far off as well. So all the timing's really being met. Sharing farm nicely with Mika up there in the top two. Mika for his part, a little bit more armor on. Going for the Lotus Orb next. Uh, for Entity, I mean, we talked about those key timings, you know, with the BKBs, with the Blinks up. What else can they do? Maybe just execute better? Should they be the one starting back? They're going. They're going to try now. Mickey, he's in. Fishman? No, they want Toby. They want the Naga Siren. They'll get Fishman first, but Toby is completely melting to the damage of Mickey. They even found another. They'll find Pure. He'll try to BKB, but the Nether Strike right through it. They will secure the outpost and Liquid. Just running circles around Entity. Pure tries to catch the back line. He knows he needs to kill the supports because those are the ones without armor, but he just gets black hold very the back. They hold him the entire time. He goes down. It, as you were saying, it's hard for Entity to take a fight, I think, outside their base. They need to force... I think they need a toss back. They need to secure one hero, get him isolated in the fight, burst him down with all of their stuns, their damage. And playing these elongated fights or getting jumped at all by Liquid is kind of... Impossible, it feels. Yeah, and they've got the tools to do that. Of course, they can stall with your Arc Ward in this event. They've got really good high ground hold, although they're going to be able to find the illusion at least. There goes that Tempest Stubble. Charges out, they see Storm Storm. It's just a matter of whether they want to try and make the jump in. Seems like it was just Boxy trying to give the vision over to the tier 3 tower. It was clipped up. Seems like Liquid, they're in no rush. They've still got two and a half minutes on that Aegis. They'll retreat, they'll reset, and maybe come back another day. Tome bought up by the Arc Warden, trying to get this level 18. This is a, ah. the small first small timing. The level 20 timing, not that big. It's a lot of damage, but he's fairly the same hero. It's all about the 18 and the 25. Those are the big timings. And whenever you're behind, you get so much XP of winning a fight. You get so many levels, they're on kill streaks, they're so much higher level than you. But do they win the fight to get there? Yeah, it's, it's tough to see that from Entity. Maybe, as you mentioned, just getting tossed back. Although, oh, that's the real hero. Stormstormer looking like he may have found an opening. They're going to try and submit Tumba. It'll be a big pickoff. A nice avalanche. A nice toss. Kataomi trying to set up. They will at least find the Aegis on Matumba, but they're going to try and focus down Boxy. But through the BKB, they can't do too much. Song of the Sire are out. It's still only two heroes, but Liquid, they're coming in. They're trying to make something happen. But it seems like Entity, they are well and truly out. They'll find the Aegis. That's going to be enough for them. That was pretty nice. They didn't even use the BKB on the Slardar. And again, this Aegis, maybe he gets tossed back to do a Slardar stun. Maybe he just gets killed instantly when he goes high ground. So maybe the game's delayed, but now the BKB's forcible. Oh, BK. Has he gone too far? BKB is there. Stormstormer is being chased down. It's just the Tempest double, though. So Mikke, very confident with the BKB, is not going to drop, not in too much danger. Can they really go for this T3 tower, though, like without the Aegis so. up? No, no, it feels so risky. Like that, just all the jump from Entity makes it feel like you, you don't want that without protection. You kind of want that next Roche. And Radiant for Entity, that's good. They get more time to try to build up. They get more time to try and hit that level 25, uh, 18, 20 Die. talent timings for Storm Stormer and just kind of play the Arc Warden game going forward. We also get to hit our 42 to 43 minute timing. Yes. Casters. <laughs> <laughs> Very important.
Very important indeed. I I'm kind of wondering, like, Zai's been very quiet this game as well, right? Like, we haven't seen one black hole. We did see yep. one. There was one solo black hole early in the game. Uh, apparently there was another, we just didn't quite catch it. Uh, what are you thinking with Zai? Like, is it is it an easy game for these black holes to come out? Is it important? Oh. Fact, hold that thought, because mid lane, we might see one soon. Pure, he's in danger. Nice toss oh, back from Kataomi. Saves the day, but will drop himself. Very nice sacrifice. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Zai... He just has nothing on his shoulders. He has no... He doesn't have to do anything. He just has to exist, and it's enough. It's scary. The hero's scary just existing. He always feels like, oh, guys, we're going to get black hold. We're going to get black hold. Careful, careful. You always are talking about it. It's always the threat. I don't think he has to click it. Yeah. He can just wait for this pure to walk forward, go to the back line, go a little too far. Black hole one hero, and it's going to be enough for them. Yeah, and just going back to that pickoff, without the tiny, that threat of the toss back is gone, so high ground completely opens up, even though you have some setup with the song here. Try to chase a little bit, but it doesn't seem like they can keep up. In fact, hold that thought. Kataomi with a nice toss back has found Matumba, man. This could be the big one. Oh. There's your black hole out from the low ground, Zai. It will get cancelled, though, by the Song of the Siren. They have at least got Fishman down. Liquid, can they keep going? It seems like they're going to try. Toby, he's the target. He'll get forced off the way, but it may not be enough. They'll just close the gap. Oh, to Kataomi. They want more. Toss in Matumba, but that's going to help Liquid. Matumba's happy to fight. They've even found the Ark Warden. Oh, my God. An ultra kill out for Mickey. And GG has called Liquid. They make this game one look very easy. Just such a dominant performance from this dire end. Oh, yeah, they, they never hit that 42, 43 minute mark we talked about. I mean, and we heard Blitz, right? They wanted to play a faster game on Liquid. Went a little bit slower in lanes, but they hit this point where they just start getting that build up. They hit these initial timings and with all of those tools on hand, they just managed to run it down. From that first Roche where they increased their lead, just went from there. I think the standout was the Matu Boxy combo. They had so many infest kills. They keep killing. They killed Sardar three times on the side lanes. They pressured uh, Stormstormer in mid. Obviously, didn't work out. But just the speech, we talked a bit. Uh, we talked a lot in this tournament already. Yeah, we hug each other. Like, I'm sure we we going into this game with the right mindset. All right, well, we'll see if that right mindset is enough to take us to a game three. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our boys as we get into the game and we'll throw it to the casters. Thank you so much, Lex. We do get into a game number two here between Liquid and Entity. A hell of a draft from both sides. Can't wait to see how this one pans out. It seems like both of you guys were leaning towards Liquid just because of the 100% win rate. You'd like to say stats Yo, don't no, lie. Sandra, seems like the safe answer to me. Personally, I love the Entity draft and I'm going to go against both of you here. What are we expecting? I mean, early level one team fights, is there any chance? There is. Uh, Pudge, Pudge is, is really strong level one. Now, ever since they buffed the hook, there's so many times where you'll just smoke up or you'll... Even you just hook the bounty rune and you'll just get a hero instead and you just... First blood's a lot more gold than a bounty rune. Yeah, and you're, you've got the Radiant side as well, so you could always go for the tree cut. If you want to trap someone in, it doesn't quite look like Liquid's really prioritizing that. But they are putting themselves in a nice, aggressive position. See if they find anything. We'll see. Toby's going to front line here on the Undying. Doesn't really want to take too much damage from this Lena, so it does seem like he might back off as Insania. Oh, that's going to be a nice shot. He's trapped three of them in there. Boxy with the perfect position. Oh, Toby's going to give away first blood, and that's a dangerous point to try and fight in when, you've, when you're against a Tusk. Yeah, they just get the perfect block from coming out, and Matoma, he's got the damage, as Gunner said. Level 1 hook feels pretty damn good. That does give them damage. a lot. Yeah, so much damage coming <laughs> out. Just pure damage as well. So they lose a bounty, but they get a lot more in exchange. In the mid lane, I mean, Stormstormer against Mikkei. Talk to me about it, Gunner. Like, this yeah. mid lane, do you think one side or the other has an inherent advantage between these two heroes? I think Lena has a pretty big advantage, but we've seen... Lena's kind of fallen off recently in favor, at least in this tournament, because they nerfed her armor a little. I think she lost a little damage. So she's a lot more manageable than she used to be, but just the the way these heroes both want to play the lane, it's very Lena favored. A lot of damage. Lushrak can't outrange you. You just get to hit him on, on and on and on and on, and he just has to sit there. Yeah, it feels a lot easier for Mika to just work that lane. I mean, Stormstormer can kind of shove out the lane as well, but it's just going to drain his man a lot more. And once that man is gone, he can't harass like Lena does. What about this top lane, boys? I mean, you've got Zai on that 100% win rate Enigma with Boxy on that pulse 4 slaughter, and they get a very nice shards off to block them in by the T1 tower. But it, oh, can they punish Pure? He's taking a fair bit of damage here underneath that T1. Fishman, he's going to try and have a run here. Pure still dropping very low as Zai. He'll chase them down. Trapples 
Rumble's down to try and slow them up. Who are they going for? Pure, he's the one in danger. Foxy, has he got the shards? Oh, he's got it in one second. He should have the egg oh, on. Perfect. He does, Pure. He's trapped up. Have you seen that before? The shards block on the T1 tower. I've never seen that. that was fact, so cool. They know a lot of now, a lot of safe lanes now. They push in these first two waves. They get a double wave and they die the tower. They force you to walk away from the wave, give gold XP. Boxy knows that. He pulls the wave before it gets the tower, but Pierre is already under the tower. He's prepping oh. for this dive, and now he has no protection. He has nowhere to run. He just takes all the tower shots and goes down. Oh, yeah. incredible! Go on, John. Yeah, it's just a great start for Liquid. You, you, add, you we, we talked about this top resire, right? Like, it's supposed to be a bit tough. It's not looking that way. They're going again. Again, pure. It's important this time for him to survive. He has not got that mid arc warden this time, so they aren't trying to at least save pure. Foxy, he's just so aggressive. Moving back in for some more hits, but pure this time is going to survive. And kind of goes back to that point. It's so important for pure to be the big man this game. Yeah, and even going on constantly, he has no shrapnel charges. Oh no. Oh, another nice shards with the snowball set up. Foxy trying to go for the body blocks into the Malifus Pure. He's going to be able to walk away for now. He'll turn around for some Eidolons, but, but the way this top lane's going, it just seems like as long as they've got mana liquid, they just don't need to slow down. Yeah, they just force themselves forward. They are making this a bit of a slower lane for Pure. Uh, he is still finding his CS, but every single time you see Boxy come in, it's it's always a kill threat. And this is the toss without even the tag team up. Once you've got that, much easier to run them down. Yeah, they're going again. Again, again and again, again and again. Let's do it. Pure, shot it up, has nowhere to go. We'll try to man fight through this one, but the Malapus is oh, there and Pure is gone. Fishman, he will try to punish, but with the tag team, he's slowed up. He might feed another kill away to the side of Liquid. Look at this. This is disgusting. Boxy, this is filthy from Boxy. Oh man. I mean, from first blood to this bloodbath in top lane, Boxy's just had so much impact. And this is the lane we expected the sniper to kind of do well in. You know, you just melt the Eidolon, you stand back, they've got the gap close with the Tusk, and it just doesn't feel like you're able to do much as Fishman here on the clockwork. Like, yeah, he's blocking off, he's draining some mana, he's getting some good uh, cancellations with a battery salt on the chase. It's just not enough to save them. Yeah, Boxy's just been doing something magical in the melee for uh, this whole tournament. He's just outstanding every game. We should talk about the bot lane, I suppose. We haven't really looked at that whatsoever. You're going to have that pause one punch there against Toby and, of course, Kataomi. So the position three undying. But Tumba, he's been farming okay. But Toby, he's been farming a little bit better with that CS sitting at 19 and 6. And with the strength still, it seems kind of hard for Matumba to stick around. In fact, they're going to try and pincer him in in this tree line. Toby, he doesn't know where he's gone. And Matumba, very nice juke out with the fog. They cannot catch him. Problem is, though, he's not finding any farm on this part. There, it's gonna be a good lane for Undying. Again, this hero, just, his strongest suit right now is the lane. He just has a strong lane, he builds into the game. And on the side of Liquid, Matu is gonna be a little sad, but he's not really the game winner. It's similar to Stormstormer last game. It's all on Mikke. He's not gonna go for this magic building, I believe. He's just gonna go probably for Boots to Travel or an Arcane Boots to do a BKB, maybe a Silver Edge. And just, he's gonna be the tower. He's gonna do everything for you. So Matu just needs to survive and find his way in the game. Boxy, this time around in a bit of danger. Fishman gonna try and punish this task because the battery is not doing so much damage. It is gonna wear off. Boxy, he does have the brown boots up, so he will be able to outrun the clockwork back towards the Roshan. He'll salve up. He's gonna be just fine. Yeah, just builds out, weighs a little bit of time from Fishman. Does or is he? Snowball is there. He's going to try and buy a little bit of time for himself as Pure was going for a free pool. In fact, now he's going to try and fight this one out. Zai trying to come in and help out. Boxy still going. Tag team is there. Pure, oh he's the one in danger. They just turn it right back around the side of Entity. And Pure, he is just getting blocked to oblivion. Kataomi, he's going to show what? up, but he hasn't got the damage. They're still no trying. Oh. Fishman, he'll finally get lucky with the battery assault, but he might drop now. Zai is still chasing. Do they have a Malapus up? They do. Fishman still running, but it's not going to be enough. Boxy, boxy, boxy. I mean, he was so close to living as well. Like, the snowball was just off cooldown. He might have been able to just get out and just find Fishman without dying. Boxy again. Forcey oh, so Boxy, stop it. I thought he had another one. <laughs> it's just it's all over the map.
And for Entity, we're not seeing that kind of play out from the supports. We're just not seeing as much impact out from our Clockwork, out from our Tiny. And it's not their fault, although they're trying now. Well, they've got a decent target. Cogs will be there with the Battery Assault. Matumba now in danger, and it seems like they will let him die. It's still a decent pickup, but like you mentioned, he's not the carry this game. Yeah, I think... Matsu's been having a similar game to Pure, but it's just not as... It doesn't look as bad because he's not dying. Right. Oh, Stormstormer! Mid lane ends up getting Lacuna down by Mickey. Looks like Boxy was around to help out. Uh, that's a fantastic kill for the side of Liquid. 100% kill participation on Boxy. Ooh, All seven yeah. kills. Not even seven minutes in the game. And just running around constantly. Yeah, he's just making work happen on map. Entity trying to set their eyes down bot here. He is caught. They have found him. Toss is there onto the creep, but the cookie away. In comes the clockwork for Zai. He's joined the fray. He does have black hole, but Fishman, he's gonna find the Enigma. There's no chance for him to be able to get this one off. So Zai will drop a nice pickup so far for Entity. They might lose Fishman, but it's gonna be a decent trade. In fact, he's still getting out of there. Scatterblast will slow him down, but in the end, he will go as Storm Storm. He shows up, Boxy's around, but against the Undying with the Tombstone, it's too hard of a team fight that they're still gonna try with this little Shredder. They'll take it out, but they are losing bodies left, right, and center. Liquid, they'll lose a third now, maybe even a fourth as Insania. He was the initial one getting caught out, and eventually he'll be the last one to get caught out. Really good rotations coming out from NTD. They wrap around for a long time down bot. It looks a little bit awkward to start off with, but it does pay off dividends. You are getting space out here for Liquid on Tumba, but considering all you find with Storm Storm around, that's a good gold injection for our Lush. This is just nice. They fully wrap around the tower, Maybe clockworks in. Zai just expecting to TP in those trees and get a black hole from the tree line, get a free kill, but he TPs in, clockworks already on him. He just gets solo killed almost by the clockwork and doesn't press black hole, and now this whole top lane is. They're kind of feeding away the gold. Yeah. It does feel like you're reeling it back in here for Entity staying in Radiant this game. You're buying space out for Pure as well. He's managed to just stay in the jungle away from this activity. And Storm Storm is the one just working the map with that lush. Um, for Liquid, it, it, you don't have the lead. You're still 9-6. to six. Are you recovering enough? Is, is, is this the point where you just kind of look at Matumba to start to get tankier? In fact, looking for more. Uh, Fishman, we get caught out. We'll go for the Kongs. Boxy is there with the tag team and a very strong avalanche from Kataomi. Was it going to matter? Like the turnaround is there. Cookie is going to allow him out for Fishman. He is barely going to be able to survive with his life intact. I think... There's not going to be much on Batu. He didn't even go for the Vanguard this game. He went for the Hood, noticing how much magic damage is on Entity. So he's just probably going to play for his really big timings. I think Ags is probably where he looks to join the game. I I wouldn't be actually be surprised if he ends up going BKB after his phase boot, just a first item BKB, and just all in commit for this Lina, doing everything for you. Yeah, we'll see if that's something that will want. And there was a little bit of pressure coming out on the mid. Entity again, still clumping around. It's rather interesting Radiant for Entity to keep taking this aggression as well. Attack. We don't even have a hook shot coming out yet on Fishman. Yeah. Once you have those initiation angles, it does feel like the game gets a lot easier. They do spot Insania out for a moment there with the Tiny on Kataomi, but not going to be able to really run in just yet. And just goes back to this equi equilibrium state of farm. Zai shoving up top, though. TPM. They are going to try and defend this one. TPs are coming. Storm Storm and Hook up from the backside. Looking at Matumba. Dismember. Going to help him out a bit. Back the snowball in. They're going to try and force the fight. Storm Stormer. He might be the one to get caught out. And may drop it. No. Oh. He will not. They'll take Matumba. They'll find Boxy. It'll be a double kill for Toby. And it just seems like every fight with the Undying in it is a fight that Liquid just can't take. Double. Yeah, they, if the tower's so low, you at some point you start to expect, oh, they're giving up the tower for free. It's a, We don't have to worry about it, but TP in just the last second, get the catch. Lusher, I thought Stormstorm was dead, but a nice toss back gives him that little reset in the fight. He doesn't die to the rot. Yeah, and I, I saw the confidence in Matumba. You know, he pops open that Hood of Defiance. Level 1 flush heap, not the biggest damage block, but he, he figures we could go for this kill. Doesn't quite shape up. And Entity starting to, again, find that punishment. They take these fights so far away from the Sniper. They get that build-up they want on Storm Stormer with his activity. And for the moment, it doesn't feel like Liquid's able to really match up just yet. Smoke out from Mickey and from Boxy, though. They've got that Aether Lance up on Mickey. A little bit more reach out from the Lina, but might just be Boxy scouting out here alone. It looks like Mickey's gonna go for the magic build. 
I thought he was going to go for the physical to be a carry, but I think uh, their logic right now is he does. You can one shot the sniper at some point in the game if you go magic build or even the lash. And probably if you kill the sniper, everyone else will die at some point to the enigma of the punch. And so he doesn't really need to be this right clicker. He can just play to kill one hero. Good enough. That's just make it a 45 off the bat. Just survive, maybe stun once or twice, and play off play off the fight. And I think that's the that's a big one for Mika, switching out for that magic. We'll see if it does pay dividends. You still have to worry about the magic damage coming out from Entity as well. You see Zai just kind of farming around in that jungle, being scouted out by Fishman. They're still managing to hold Liquid off from really getting too much more done in the invasions here. And they are still buying that space out. At what point do you feel like for Liquid that they've kind of allowed Pure to farm too much and it starts to become a threat in that sniper? Uh, maybe once he gets his item after Dragonlance. So I think he just finishes the Maelstrom now. Once he gets the Dragonlance, it's, he does damage, but it's after that. Fishman getting caught out. Mid lane, Laguna, not gonna be enough yet. Eventually he does drop a box. He had to stick around so long that they will trade quite effectively here for Entity. And Toby shows up at that right moment with the Tombstone. It just doesn't allow them to fight back. Liquid, I'm not sure, are these fights in their favor? It's it's hard to say. Entity has the range in the fights. They have the sniper and the lash, and they have the burst. But they're going to constantly make these aggressive moves, like on Matu and Bot. Yeah, this one's in definitely in their favor. Or is it dismember? Is going to be them at Tumba. He'll try to fight back. Ooh. A very nice cookie up from Insania. Now the turnaround with the Mortimus kisses. Storm Stormer. He could try to run, but there's no escaping. Just rains fire on the lash rack, and it seems like Entity they had no other response to it. And that's just sick from Insania. Coming in at the right time, cookies at the right time, and the kiss is on point. Very close from Matu, gets at least a second off the dismember, so gets a little bit of healing, just enough to get out of there. You also see how strong the Flesh Heap is now for Slush. Every, every tick of the Lesh Hole only does 20 damage when the Flesh Heap's active, so really tanky versus the hero. Sounds very, very balanced indeed. It's it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine it is. Fun, fun is well. balance. Yeah, absolutely. And Dota is supposed to be a fun game. So that's how we balance around here. Of course, for Entity, I mean, it's it's not all gloom and doom. They're still having these massive stacks being taken here by Storm Stormer. His Bloodstone doesn't feel like it's going to be too long, although the timing isn't maybe as fast as what we saw from Mika in game one. But it's still going to be there. And once you do have that frontline sustain, all that damage coming out from Storm Stormer, you can make some work happen. Uh, you do have the full raid pack up on Zydo. So again, we're reaching that point where the Enigma is just going to be holding back a lot of what Entity will want to do up front there. Yeah, the big difference is, is uh, Pure is top net worth now after that rough lane. Three deaths in the one lane. and uh, He's also very good versus raid pack. One of the things this sniper is he can just kill the raid pack very quickly. Not much to worry. and. It, he is hard to jump. It's going to be on the back of probably Boxy, who ends up going for a Force Staff. I think Force Staff's really nice for the clock, for the Lena versus the Tiny, but no Blink. They're not really going to have any of these Blink Daggers to catch the Sniper in the early game, so it's a lot of just maybe wrapping around on the Sniper, catching him first, or just trying to fight away from him where you see him on the map. The smoke up behind Mickey, they're going to rotate into that Dire Triangle. Oh, they'd love to find Storm Stormer, but he's quite low. He's going to go for a reset back at the Fountain. A nice timing here for Storm Stormer, just clearing out the triangle while he could. Instead, maybe into the mid lane they go. They'd love to find a pickoff and perhaps move into that T1 mid tower. Thing is, Toby is the one they'd have to aim. He's hiding in that tree line for now. It's just not going to be that easy to try and burst down this Undying. Unless Matumba, he could try. A shot will give the vision. Mortimus kisses are out. Snowball is there as well from Boxy, trying to buy a bit of time as they do go back into Fishman. The clockwork still surviving. Meanwhile, in comes the cavalry. Storm Stormer, he finds insane. Everyone's getting tossed left, right, and center. In goes Toby. He wants a little bit more, just taking so much strength away. And it seems like this time for Liquid, they just oh. can't force the fight, but they do find Fishman. Toby, he'll keep going, but they don't have the lockdown for any more. Yeah, you can just see the response out from Entity. Instant TP's in the moment they see these heroes break out from the smoke, and they just commit to hold off. They know how important that mid tier one is. They just toss all their bodies in Liquid. They just don't have enough to really get it done. They also kind of fragment themselves inside. Like we saw Insane just trying to target out the Tombstone. Couldn't really do much. It's also just how strong a die is when you dive. 
you go past, your team kind of gets stretched out, the tombstone gets dropped, you can't kill it because not everyone's around it. Dyer's and then you just get, keep slowing, keep attack. slowing, keep slowing, the tiny TP's Dyer's in, the, you get shrapnel, and just so much slows for when Liquid has to chase just walking in. Dyer's middle tower see what they can do now, denied. Liquid falling a little bit further behind. 2k net worth now, the way of entry, and you already talked about this, but Pure just escalating out of control now with that net worth, and it's a struggle to find what kind of answer you have for this sniper. The Toby just doing such a fantastic job on the Undying, second in net worth right now, and just so tanky, so hard to deal with, and it's just not the target you want to try and burst down first, but Toby's oh, just giving can. them no options whatsoever. So Liquid, maybe feel like they're a little bit trapped at the moment, maybe need to slow down the pace of the game, get, get, get a few more items up, but it's kind of hard to know exactly what they need at the moment. The only item they can really wait for is his Pudge Axe. Everything else is, even the, the Lena Axe, 3,000 gold away, the Enigma Blink is 1,000 gold away. You don't want to wait for so many different timings, but probably once they get the Axe, they're going to smoke up and look for a fight. Yeah, they've got to build off the back of Matu, and that nice timing you do get with a Pudge, the damage output he does have on hand. It does feel really tough. I think, uh, talking about Toby again, he does have the look sort of up. They do get a good hook here. Yeah, insane, yeah. Let's get caught out. He'll try to run towards the north and try to juke out Fisherman, but it's just so hard with the battery assault. Even the tombstone being dropped just in case they needed the vision. And Toby, he'll take his fifth kill of the game. Got it. It's just getting way too much in this undying. Again, he's got the Lotus Orb up. He's already got a casual cloak up going to the Hood of Defiance. And with all the strength he's stealing, with the way he has to save his teammates from the snowball potentially, it's gonna feel really hard for Liquid to kind of come in. All their control, most of it, is single target outside of Snowball, not the most reliable to catch a group, or the LSA. So you're always gonna have some value from just that dispel coming out, and Toby's just been really, really massive in the front line. Yeah, and on the side of Liquid, they don't really have the front lane right now. Matu hasn't had the opportunity to group up with his team and be this body. He just... The one time they did it, they won the fight. In the jungle, he jumped and they turned it on Stormstormer. But outside of that, he's kind of had a... He's had to struggle trying to find the, the front line. Right, so he's still grouped up. Everyone just hanging around pure, making sure the sniper remains safe. They're gonna find a double damage rune with a smoke up. This could be perfect timing for Entity. They could are hanging around though on the high ground, just waiting to see if somebody does take the rune away. In fact, never mind, they don't have the vision. Boxy did not see him. In fact, now Mickey, he's the one to get spotted out, but they can't hold him down. Stormstormer, he will move in, but again, just doesn't see the angle. That'd be about it. They won't be able to abuse the double damage quite yet. Really close to getting tossed back all the way in, but thankfully for Mickey, he walks away, doesn't get tossed. And dodging a gank, that was the Lush Track Bloodstone timing. That's, again, that's the biggest timing for the hero. You get this item, you want to go fight constantly for the rest of the game. And they weren't able to get a catch with it. Yeah, it's, it's missing out a little bit on time, giving Liquid a little bit more room to breathe. They've got their own Ags up now in Matu. So uh, the Podge is kind of ready to go if they find something here. Oh, hook shot in, very, very nice from Fishman, finding the angle, but there's Insane here. Get the cookie away. They turn this one around. Now that's a big avalanche up from Kataomi, but where's your follow-up? In comes Pure. He's got the double damage. That's like gone. We find more. Snowball in, Boxy has no choice of the matter, he's going to go down, Kisses are still going, but Pure, he jukes them out for now, they just don't have any more follow-up, in the meantime, they do at least find Toby, in they go again though, Insania, he's being targeted, and he'll be the third target to go down for the side of Liquid, they only find one in the mid lane. It's just a little bit too fragmented. You're super strong on Matu. He just melts through Toby in the mid, but he's not there to help his team. He's not there to try to, you know, do a little bit more damage, poke them down with a rot. And they, they were just really clumped up there from the side of Liquid up top. There's a nice ward on the cliff, which is what lets uh, them get the Hoshan and Boxy, but nice disengage. You see what Liquid wants to do? They want to kite them into this ward. They want to keep running backwards and the second entity went too far, they want to turn, but nice avalanche, big four-man stun into Toss and once that happens, everyone's caught up from Entity. They're all grouped up now. Now Liquid's the one fighting into Entity. Just didn't feel that good in the end. I mean, they, the idea was good. Just doesn't quite shape up. They've got the blink on Zydek. We still haven't seen a black hole this game. Again, yeah, not the biggest thing for the Enigma and more, but it does feel like in those situations, you're looking for that lineup. Or maybe just, again, targeting pure as we saw in game one, where Zy would just kind of find an angle around and take away that big core. Pure is starting to feel like that massive core. He's working onto the BKB next, and we just saw his damage out. But sure with a double damage rune, but yeah, if you can't gap close on the sniper, he just does so much. And that fight enables him to get this BKB now. He's about 700 gold away. And now, Lina's going right, or er, magic damage, not right click. Pudge is all magic. 
Tusk is mostly magic. Who's gonna kill him in the BKB? Do you black hole? He might not even die in a black hole BKB. Very, very fair point. Liquid gonna find some answers here. Entity just gonna keep doing what they're doing. 3k advantage, 13 to 15, 21 minutes in. Seems like as the game goes on, the sniper just becomes a bigger and bigger issue. And oh, even if you gain the lead as Liquid trying to go high ground against the sniper on dying and, and the Leshrac, it's just never gonna be easy. They do hang around across the map on both sides. Neither side really wanting to try and force a fight. We'll see a casual scan out on the Roshar pit, but nobody hanging around there either. And it seems like the Axe is on the way very soon for Mickey. It's got a lot of cast range with that neutral item as well as the Aether Lens. Just cast from a mile away and it's, it's going to be a very nice feeling for Mickey to just not have to be too close. Let's see what they can get done with this Axe. Yeah, two big items picked up, which is why they go smoke. They get the Blink on the Pudge. Now they have a hero to go in, stun, create chaos, and then the Lina Axe, which is a crazy amount of damage. It's 35% spell amp. You also take or 35 magic resistance and 30% spell amp. So now this is how the sniper gets one shot. He gets stunned for half a second, Laguna, all the nukes. It does, a, I think it'll do around 1800 damage and just kill the sniper in one hit. It's gonna be massive, but that BKB pure, poor pure is flying out. So it's all about timing. It's all about pinning him down in that window and just bracing them him down right afterwards. Immediate smoke out now from Entity with her own item picked up. And it's gonna be an interesting position for Liquid right around that ramp area once more. Oh, in we go. Four man smoke up, Entity running right towards Liquid, but Boxy, he's around with the vision. They'll see the Undying. So Liquid know they need to back off, but Entity, they are still trying to rush forward. Have they got the advantage? They've got the high ground and they'll move into Matumba Man, but a cookie is gonna be there. Tombstone immediately being targeted, but it's not gonna be enough from Insania. They're still trying. It looks like the snap fire does get caught out, but that's only the pause five of Liquid. You'd like a little bit more for your trouble if you are Entity, but it seems like that's all they're going to be able to afford to get. So hard to fight when he drops the Tombstone on the high ground. You don't really have anyone who wants to hit it. The Snapfire can hit it. You miss once or twice, Tombstone's not going to die to you purely, so... How do you fight around these Tombstones on the high ground? Yeah, it just feels impossible. Like, we've seen that twice over now, in almost the same area where they're just kind of forced to back off on Liquid Zentobi just being a massive beast on that Undying. Perfect positioning in all of these fights. Entity's still not done, though. The double smoke out here, Stormstormer and Katomi want to find more, but no one hanging around down bot. Liquid just kind of playing it safe, getting their farm up elsewhere. What other items can we see? Like, you are going for the BKB on Matu, as you called out there, so just going to look to try to be active. It is after the Axe, though. Yeah, at some point, they just need a hero that, once they know that NC's running at them, the hero doesn't turn and run and wait for anything. They need this, They need Pudge, they need Matu to see four heroes running at them, press S, stand there and stare at them, <laughs> and walk at them. And so, so far it hasn't happened. That's why they're constantly walking backwards. Even when they have full vision, they have to keep walking backwards. Mickey doesn't want to do it. Sayo doesn't want to do it. Boxy doesn't really want to be the one. He wants to save the one with the snowball. And so a lot of it's going to be on whether Matu feels strong enough to be that frontliner. All right now, he certainly doesn't feel like he does. Maybe a bit more time with the BKB to come out. Zai narrowly avoiding any kind of hookshot attempt there from Fishman. Picking back towards the south. More defensive itemization from Liquid, as you do see Insania now with the four staff up. You can get Pure just going for the full damage build as well. Scary stuff just going right into the Daedalus, and that's going to be very, very concerning. Like, if you can't find this guy, he's just going to delete your whole team. Also going for the stats over Assassinate. So oh, yeah. Pure damage. Yeah. Radiant All about the right clicks. Scanning. Nice pun, Gunner. <laughs> We've seen that a couple times, you know, if you don't need the assassinate, if you don't need uh, that longer reach, it, it, re it really doesn't feel like Entity has to, because no one's really highly mobile on the side of Liquid. You just go in the stats, you fatten up, you get a little bit more durable for pure, and you just get so much more out of it as well. Liquid for their part, again, waiting for those items to come in. They're working towards a blink now for Mika. So just gonna have a little bit more follow through to jump in when needed or jump out when needed and just kind of dance around her. Also, uh, they were they are saving up for the blink on Boxy to get that blink save from the Tusk for blink initiation. It's also gonna be up there. With this stall out in time though, does it feel better for Entity? It does feel like they're getting a lot more from this time. I think it feels better because Matu isn't really getting health with the BKB. He's getting the ability to not get comboed by all the stuns and spells. But Pure's buying damage. So now that Matu's not really buying the health, the matchup of being able to survive the damage is kind of going Entity's favor until the plate mail. But that's, you know, you're asking Matu to get 5,000 gold when they're already 5,000 gold. <laughs> 
so one easy ask. It's Honestly. a huge gap to kind of clear out. And, you know, Punch does farm fairly fast, but it's still going to take some time. And he's still sharing that space with Zai and with Mike. Both of them are kind of occupying the jungle as well. Um, anything else that kind of helps Liquid out here? Entity does feel like they've got almost everything lined up. But what maybe is there? Is there like a fast, quick fix item timing that we're looking for on Liquid's end? I don't know if it's so much an item timing rather than getting the proper jump of vision. Because again, you need the frontliner for vision. They don't have any heroes that provide vision besides the punch bodying up. So if they catch the sniper, he will die to the Lina. He will die to, you know, Tusk Lina combo, just the two of them. And it's just hard to see him. You'll never see him. He'll always be in the back. He has so much vision and range on the sniper. Even at night, he has 1800 vision. So just the inability to catch him is the issue. Right, so he's still grouped up, pretty much as four, just not splitting up. Just really just frontlining and making sure Pure can farm. That's that literally all they're doing is staying in front of Pure. Just making sure that nobody can gank him up. Storm's Tommy will take care of the side lanes. Liquid, they're doing a very, very similar thing across the map. Just sticking as a team, not trying to give any openings away to Entity. It's clear they have some timing they're looking for. Maybe even the blink to come out on both Foxy and Mickey very, very soon. But you are giving Pure that time to get that Daedalus up. And well, like you said, if you catch the Sniper, it's not. who cares if he has Daedalus? He's not going to be able to use the damage anyway. But for now, they are going to smoke up as four. Toward the top side they go. Who do they find? Zai will think away immediately. Matamba, he might be a bigger target here for Entities. They do try to make their way through to the right hand triangle, but Matamba, great read on the movement, and now the hook, it's not going to be on target. Entity, they'll try to force Roshan instead. Yeah, they've, they've got the time to do that, but there is a lot of AoE out from Liquid with the BKBs here and Blinks. Oh, Hookshot wasted just on an illusion, so at least, you know, one spell's down for Fishman, at least for the next minute. Roshan is still being targeted. They're trying to abuse that Tombstone and Flesh Golem timing here on the Undying. Liquid, can they fight this one out? Insania is going to make his way in, but does Cookie away? It seems like they have so much trouble getting close. Roshan, though, is still relatively healthy. They've still got time. Half HP, half HP here for the Roshan as Liquid. Still hanging around. Shards are there. Smoke is out. Liquid, can they make it in time? They're going to rush for it. There's the kiss of Batamba. He's in, but pure. He's the one to pick the Aegis up. They will not get away with it. Karaomi, he is going to drop his Batamba. He's trying to tank for the team, but a bit more time and now the black hole Zai he's only got two of them but it's set up perfectly they cannot save a pure he's trying to man up through it he does take down one Aegis is gone onto the left rack they've got Mickey on the Lena he is gonna drop pure he'll just keep going for more now as Zai does get caught as well a full team went for Entity they just, they play it so clean. Liquid, they try to find the flank. They might find a full team wipe here. This is a dieback on Boxy if he is caught. He'll go for a snowball out, and he is gone. That'll be a dieback immediately for Boxy. That hurts. That's his blink dagger. That's what, that, you need the blink to catch the sniper. Even in that fight, you see Matu has the blink to the tip. If he gets that Aegis, maybe the whole fight's different. But now, you've committed so much into the, the Roche pit that Mickey gets a kill, the support buys back. They kill the clock, he buys back too. The supports don't really matter. It's just so hard for them to keep constantly fighting into the Undying. Yeah, it's just so tough. And they, they did find a good angle. You did see Zai try to be really patient in that black hole, but doesn't really manage to catch enough for that massive impact you'd want, and Pure managed to reposition himself further in the pit, Radiance so he had more usage out of that Aegis, and it, it just, it takes way too long for Liquid to kind of get on top, and Entity just punished so nicely. We're gonna find Insania on that snap fire. Four stuff away, not gonna be enough. Entity really feeling themselves now. They just wanna keep this aggression up. They understand how much more powerful they are. Even without the Aegis, they might Radiance just go for these T2 tower towers. towers. Seems like they are setting up the mid-tier two now. Don't really have a creep wave to go off, but seems like they are just gonna stick around and control this map. Make sure Liquid can't catch up in this net worth. When you go magic on Lina, a lot of your damage is based on your cooldowns. You're not constantly sitting there right-clicking every single time, so you're not your damage is consistent. It's very high in bursts, but you have to wait four or five seconds and you do it again. And in the fight, Zai black holes and Mickey wasn't there. He wasn't able to nuke, he wasn't able to burst the Leshrac. Leshrac survives the whole black hole. Pure doesn't even die at the beginning of the fight either. He gets to hit for 10, 15 seconds, and then he just respawns with Aegis anyway. So it's mostly about just connecting Mickey to the fights at the right time. He was struggling Radiance to deal with Katomi on the tiny for the attack. beginning of the fight, and him and Matu have to just connect. Every single time in the fight, they have to connect. 
we have to go again. The Tumba, he does get spotted, forced to BKB up, but can't really utilize that BKB whatsoever apart from escaping. What a Pretty great item. It. Ogre Seal Totem is. It's just a but even better. I always, you always see the hero and they pause for like that half second where they're, they're cast pointing it and then a little bounce into bounce. Yeah. It's, a, it's, an, it's an amazing animation to always watch. And that blink you mentioned on Boxy is up and running. We've got a wave coming in, although. They've got him again. This time, no BKB available. Matumba, can he survive through? He'll pop the Flesh Golem, but it's just so much damage flying in from Pure. He is going to melt. The tier 2 bot is completely open now for Entity. It, it, it's getting a little bit tough for Liquid. It just goes back to maybe Mika going for that magic buildup and the earlier BK, BKB use for Maki. Now high ground's opened up. They can try to death. They don't have the threat of Black Hole in the defense just yet. It will be up. They still have the Blink Snowball saves if they want to kind of take a risk. And Tito, they do look confident in this one. Yeah, this game, there's no Tiny on the side of Liquid to kind of delay these high ground pushes. Every time the Entity wants to walk up and just hits the tower, if Lina's not there, there's not much to force you away besides the Pudge, and Pudge is dead. So, free damage, free tower, they, they force the Glyph out. Really big Glyph now, because there's not going to be a Glyph for a long time. Unless they take this Tier 3 tower in any lane, no Glyph for the next five minutes. And that just allows them on Entity to really take control of the map, start to shut down that bot jungle, prevent Liquid from dipping outside and trying to get any additional buildup. 16 to 24, 12k lead out for Entity. They've, they've bounced back really well. Looks like they have managed to reset, changed their game plan, and just put up a much bigger fight up against Liquid. If you're Liquid right now, you know, you, you go back to that Magic Lina, you go back to this Pudge Core. Uh, what else is there? Is it still down to just trying to catch the back line? It's still all just about catching the Sniper. They have the two Blinks online, I guess three with the Pudge. Four, four. They have four blinks. I, <laughs> you know, NA math, it's hard to count sometimes. <laughs> and it's, it is all about catching the sniper. He has a Lincolns now to block uh, the Laguna Blade. It's pretty hard to pop the Lincoln through BKB. So, it, is it even possible to catch him? If you catch him now, he has so many defensive tools. The Tiny can uh, toss him away, he can force him away. And once you have to commit so far to just catch the sniper, that's where all the slows come out, all the stuns, all the AoE that... Even if you kill the sniper, maybe you just get cleaned up. It just gets really difficult in stopping Pure from just doing what he wants in this game. And in that point, Entity, they're, they're just going for the tier twos. Nothing to stop them from Liquid's end. Liquid trying to get a bit of a chub out themselves up top, but the Fortify is still there to stall. Entity do manage to, again, shrink that map down even further and just really have a great game for, for Liquid. Th that jump angle onto Pure, it, it just doesn't feel great. Maybe down the line, if Boxy, say, picks up an Axe, he could have options, but that doesn't feel like it's going to be coming out anytime soon, if at all. There's a nice scan out there. No, they're in the Radiant Triangle right now, so Liquid immediately dissipating and just trying to get back towards the fountain. Just avoid, avoid, avoid the Stormstormer. He's going to rush forward, but won't be able to find Box. He'll be just fine to TP away, back towards his team. They'll just try and get another part of the map. It's all you can do right now. Just play the avoid game as we see Mike. He's got even more magic camp now on the Lena. I mean, you, you kind of already said it. He can already one shot them as it is. It's more of, it's the ability to do it, right? Yeah. It's not the it's not the damage. The damage is not the issue for Liquid. It's just we go. doing the damage. Boxy, he's in. Katoomi, he'll be the one snowballed out. Boxy, he's going all across the bot. And he will end up going down. Liquid, is this really the fight? It doesn't seem like it. They're going to try and back out. Entity, they're the ones that try to force it. Once again, Liquid, it seemed that they were trying to go for some kind of initiation, but nobody was really ready for it. Yeah. Hey don't manage to hook up in time, or maybe just kind of stalling tactic out from Boxy, and you know, just try to buy its time for his team to make that executive call to group up or back off. And just going back to Mika, right? Like, he has so much damage. I think the one thing with the E-Blade, at least, you've got the Lincoln's Popper. If you do feel that need to jump onto Pure, bait the BKB out, and just waste the Lincoln's, provide an opening, perhaps, for Matu to come in with, with his BKB dismember. I think the one thing with that is that it doesn't feel like Matu's that tanky. I mean, he's got the plate mail up. He doesn't have the highest HP in the world. Mind you, if you do manage to dismember the, the, the sniper, you don't really need to worry about a, any other source of big physical damage anyway. It's really just the Lash Rack kind of twacking away at you. So there could be value there, but in the execution entity, 
I think it's, it's more about Entity just being able to play this way, where Pure is just so far out that Liquid just never finds the angle. Yeah, it's, it is honestly all about this angle, and it feels like it keeps getting smaller and smaller as the game goes. Sniper is this kind of hero where the later the game goes, the harder it is to catch him, because it's not that he gets weaker, it's that everyone else just gets stronger. Everyone else has more tools to save him or to stun you or to kind of disable and catch him. It's only when it gets to the very, very late, where now on the other side, Liquid now has six items on every single hero, they have the Ags and the Tusk, that's when it kind of flips back in their favor, but... Boxy's having a rough game. He hasn't been able to get much farm. He's had a lot on his shoulders after this amazing early game he had. It hasn't really kind of transferred into this mid lake. I remember speaking to some of the boys from Liquid as well just before the series started, and they I did ask them, was is this going to be an action-packed game? And they said, well, ask Entity. We're the ones that want to fight. And right now, it's kind of the opposite way. Liquid, they're the ones that just want to try and stay away from this dire side. And I suppose that plays into the hand of Entity because they are a team that enjoys playing a slower-paced game. They're not a afraid of going into the later stages and Liquid, they're in a position where they're forced to try and play that game that Entity already enjoys playing. It's kind of like you're in their arena and they've got the buff here as uh, Entity. But to be fair to them, they are the ones chasing right now as they do draw some lines down to the bottom side. Liquid, they are going to go for a four-man smoke. Let's see if this one pays off. Kataomi, he's ready on the high ground to break the smoke and they've got some decent vision in that triangle. At least for the Entity side. Nice scout by the Adelon. He's going to see them all. It is oh. Tumba. He's going to jump in. They see Toby first. They'll try to blow up with the Lagoon. That's a lot of damage. They've got Toby and they've got Fishman. Now the oh. Black Hole is out. They've got the Leshrac. It's only one, but it's a big target. Foxy in the meantime, he has gone down. He's going to try and burst down this tiny. Matumba still tanking through all the damage to the Cookie. It's not going to land with the hook shot. It is Kataomi trying to run away with the Sil Totem. He's going to make it out. Matumba, he is going to go down. Meanwhile, towards the north side still trying to run but the battery assault oh fishman barely in time is gonna make it who wins out the team fight it does seem like it's entity once again yeah again they have to buy back on both supports every fight it seems entity wins two supports have to buy back but it doesn't really matter the cores keep getting bigger and bigger and there's Not how do they, they black hole the leshrax black hole for free for four seconds they no stops and he takes 200 damage total during the whole black hole they have nothing for the bkbs it just goes back to that, going for the Magic Lina, going for Core Podge. Once the BKBs are up, you just don't have a way of piercing. And if that happens to the Lesh, you can expect that same thing to happen if Pure was around as well. Like the Sniper has the same defensiveness once the BKB is up. Liquid, they've got to find a way to fix that issue. Is it? Is there any way to fix that issue though? Well, you've gone all in on Magic. There is a 25 talent for Lina. It makes it Pure and Pure's BKB. And that's maybe one kill, but the counter to one kill is an Aegis. So for the side of Entity, they're going to pick up the Sages. They're going to get the Shard. Toby's going to take it. Uh, this is this the second Roche, guys. That's the big one. That's where games are ended. And goes Entity now. See if they want to try and force the end. There's still a T2 tower at this top lane, but they can easily get through it with the damage of Pure. Even a Scythe device now up and available for Stormstormer. So much more control from this Leshrac. He isn't with his team yet, but he's got those BOTs up, so he can join at any time. Do they want to continue? There's just so much time on the Aegis, they may as well just kind of get themselves together, maybe go for a bit of a fight before they try for the high crown. You look back at Mickey, he's still trying to maximize the magic field, looking to go into the Octarine core now. Like you said, I mean, somehow you've got to clean out the BKBs throughout the fight. That's the only way for Liquid to take them. Entity, they just don't seem concerned whatsoever. They've had full control over this game for pretty much the last 20, 25 minutes, and Liquid's still looking for an answer here. I, I suppose it's a bit of a silly question. There's no way Mickey can kind of transition now to a right-click build anyway. It's way yeah, too late for that. It's a little too late. At this point, it's just playing for the 25. I, I could even see him, instead of going for the Octarine, going for a refresher. And just hoping for the ability to just press Laguna twice, do like 2,000 something magic damage, pure damage, and just kill a hero. But it's it's a hard it's a hard ask. You're asking for a lot. Yeah, it's really risky as well if if you don't manage to get that burst down because you have to keep that refresh in your inventory. Not the worst thing for the Lena. It's also not quite the ideal as you're going to be very squishy when you do get jump. Entity again, they're they're playing a very patient game here. Pure is working onto his own swift blink up, gets another double damage rune on that sniper. So that could enable the high ground for them. Just kind of need to keep the lanes further shoved out as Liquid at least has some room up top to kind of farm at least one lane out. 
Yeah, generally with Aegis, you don't want to use the, the very first minute of the Aegis is the farming part. Because you have you have four minutes. You have five minutes total. So you want to use the first minute, maybe to group up, push all the lanes in, get the map in a nice pretty position where everything's pushing in. And then when there's two minutes left, that's where it feels awkward. Killing the Aegis doesn't feel that good because they only had a minute or two left. But if you don't kill them, now you're just taking your whole base. That they are. They're going to run up that tier 3. Laguna is already out. Ooh. Hawk is there as well. They've got the Undying, but Toby, he's going to survive. Four Staff is out. Maybe instead they get cut to Omi, but the Four Staff's away with the Seal Totem. He's still running. Pure with the double oh, damage. God. Just rips by a new one. Look at this, Mickey. He's trying to run. The Hawk's going to save the day, but the Assassinate. Oh. oh, it's in the fountain. Look at Pure go. He's not done yet, he wants four. What are we aiming, Pure? In fact, they're gonna go in. Hulk oh. is there. Boxy, has he set up? Pure, no, the four staffs. He's gonna be able to get out once again. They just can't catch him. Triple kill now for Pure, as he's onto the tier four towers. It's not looking good for Entity, or rather Liquid. They're gonna three-man smoke up, try one more time to save this game too. But Entity, they'll just keep going for the tier four towers. Only one left. How do you try and defend this? There's Side the vice out on Mike. Pure right to it. They just can't catch up. They can't even get close to him. He can be black hole in five seconds. That's kind of the last hope for Liquid right now. And we go, Matamba, he's going to try and bait for this one. Mike, he'll join in as well. Toby, still taking through it. He's going to go down. That's one down, but Matamba in trouble. Zion, he's also been spotted. Pure is just not letting him get anywhere near the sniper. Don't forget, you've still got that secondary life. They still hold on to that final T4 as they do jump in again. Matumba, he wants the first life, but the four stops are there. The Hawk oh. is going to land. He's got the first one. Zai, he still needs to get in range. He's got the black hole. It's going to connect on two of them. Pure is distracted right now. Have they done it? Can Liquid keep defending? Kataomi is going to drop it. They've got the Mickey oh leader. God. It's all over. There's only one left. It's only Zai. And without the black hole, there's no way they defend this. And three, or do they? Boxy, he's back up but it's it's just it's basically two supports against the sniper pure he's got the hand up high fives all around they'll kick away the left track storm stopper he might drop it it's not gonna matter gg's called we are going to a game number three. Oh yeah i mean it was a valiant effort coming out there for liquid towards the end but it just doesn't line up pure is just way too big they had no catch for the back line uh, Gunner, where do you think it kind of went down? Because it felt like they had such an amazing start for Boxy, but it just didn't pan out. I think the pure just... I think the bot tower defense, this tier one bot actually mattered a lot for how their momentum was going in the early game. They they did great in their lanes. Boxy was in seven kills early. Again, crushing the early game, but they make a choice. They defend this bot tower and it doesn't really work out. They lose four heroes, I think, and that's where Entity, that's where they started. Pure didn't even show up. He gets all his farm, he gets all these items, and just the game snowballs from there. What do you think Liquid can do different in Game 3? Like, if you're going to change anything, at least in this draft, do you think, what do you think they need to change up at least to win out this Game 3? Let's throw it to our casters. Thank you very much, Lex. We do get into it. Game number 3. We've got some great people. We've got some great Dota here. Boys, what are we thinking? You've seen both the drafts. Do you think one team came out on top of the other? The, I think the Puck pick was really nice, but Ember, every time I see Puck Ember, it's a little scary. This... Pucks get nerfed, the lane is a little weaker, so it can be scary from that matchup. Yeah, I have a lot of dancing here for Mikkei. I feel like the Ember should be able to kind of jump in and out as long as the Puck doesn't fully commit towards him. So you've got a lot of play, and I think that back and forth is going to be key here for the side of Liquid and how well that mid comes back. It's interesting as well, Gunner, right? Like, you, we talked about it a little bit, but they do go back into the Enigma, and we see Entity go back into the Tiny. So, Zai and Kataomi have played the same heroes this entire series, and, you know, every they've managed to trade blows, so we'll see who does get the better win percentage out of this one. Yeah, and uh, it's also the one thing that you have to make sure when you play the same heroes, like, mentally resetting. Because you, you play very stressful games, you're like, and the game ends, you're, you know, you're mentally thinking, like, I'm level 16, I have these items, and then you go back level 1. You have nothing, you're slow, <laughs> no spells. So just starting from the bottom. So yeah, it does turn out, both these teams. Hanging around the mid lanes for now. Standard stuff. A level 1 team fight could break out. You kind of mentioned it last game, but you've got the Pudge available, and that's always a, a painful kind of hero to have to go up against level 1. See, yeah, we saw we saw last game. Matsu got the first blood, or he helped secure the first blood, and 
NCT is another team that has been playing carry punch for a really long time. So it's kind of their flavor. And last game it didn't work out. I think this game it has some better matchups than it did last game. Not as much damage, but again, Life Series known to be tank or good versus tanky strength heroes. They are going to move in, bully them out from the bottom side. It is going to be a three for one trade the way of Entity, so they'll be very happy with that banner rune start. Uh, nice little bonus for them to get started. Of course, we'll look back into the mid lane straight off the bat, see how this one goes. We are going to have the Ember. Of course, Mike going to be up against the Puck of Entity. How does this matchup work out? It's okay for the Puck if he can do really well in the first three levels specifically, but at some point, whenever it hits level three, four, that's when it gets very hard. Puck has no armor, the slide of his spam just pushes him out of the lane very easily, and he can't really pop flame guard without over committing onto you. Yeah, it does feel like the early timings of an Ember just feel a lot better as well. I think just going for an early Orb of Corrosion, or even just the Blightstone into phase boots can feel really nice, and the Puck just doesn't sustain through that all too well. Yeah, Puck... The mana nerfs and the small cap removal hurt a lot that you can't just spam the orb every every time you have it. You have to think about when you use it. And now that you also have to use all your mana, you don't really want to get waiting grips. So you can't break the shield. And then if you can't break the shield, you can't man up. So now you need phase shift. And it's just a lot of things that have hurt the match over time. Got lane insane here. Dropping rather low, but does find the courier of Toby. Of course, you can have the Tumba Man against Toby on that brood mother, And Katomi will be there to support that brood. What are we thinking about this lane? Like for now, Matumba's been doing a decent job of bullying Toby out. Is there a stage where Toby starts to kind of throw back the other way? Uh, probably not until level six. And even then, it's not the greatest. I think right now, Matu's gonna completely free farm and Toby's gonna get maybe similar, but not the same. It's a lot of just slightly in the favor of Liquid. They're gonna be completely fine and Entity's the one who are gonna try to make moves to make, you know, get the creeps themselves. Fishman. Being chased down, Boxy, hoping for a bash, not gonna get it. There's no lucky bashes coming out from Boxy here. You do, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. You know, on mid lane, Mickey gonna go for a bit of a chase up to Storm Storm, but they're just fighting. He's, uh, this timing here, this two minute water rune timing, and it's like they should be able to find one H anyway, not too big of a deal. Yeah, it's still feeling really good for Mikhail on that mid though. You can see that CS disparity already. Turkey to one, 10 to one. First Storm Stormer not too far behind, but once some initial items come in, at least the Blightstone, I think you're gonna have a good time with a slight fist spam. Storm Stormer, he does have good support to come in mid if they see that opportunity, but if they do want to go for that, they have to go before Mika hits six. Once the Ember has the remnants and then getting a gank onto him, it's gonna require the Dream Coil and you're gonna to have to coordinate onto that one really fast. Yeah, again, as you said, one of the big things with Puck that makes you feel good about your Puck game or bad is whether you can kill them when you coil them. And again, that's why one reason that Ember's very good versus Puck is because Flame Guard kind of prevents all of this magic damage early and it makes it so he survives the coil and then you have nothing versus him. So the fact that they have Tiny who can break the coil with Toss, they have a Chikira with a lot of nukes, that if they can group these hero up and kill the Ember during the coil, then the matchup will be fine. Still zero to zero, no first blood being drawn yet. And it's in. A lot of damage being dealt here by Matumba and Insania as they go on to Kataomi, but it's not going to be quite enough. Matumba just happy to keep dominating the lane. Not too interested in securing first blood. It's top lane. Maybe that's where we see it. Zai is chased down, but the bash is there from Foxy. Another, Another one. All right. Can we get a third? Charge us out. Let's keep going. Foxy <laughs> getting very, very lucky there. I think if there's any lane with pressure, it's going to be in this one, either side. Probably uh, Entity, maybe once Pudge gets uh, point and hook, maybe at three or four, whenever he just, uh, decides to choose that. Because uh, the other two lanes are probably just going to be slow, slow wins over time. It's not going to be really kills. It's going to be, you chip them down, you get the extra last hits. That's what's happening mid, that's what's happening bot. But top is where both lanes have the ability to kill. Yeah, they've got a lot of damage, a lot of slows on hand coming out from Entity. Good amount of stuns from Liquid if they got lucky. We saw Box kind of hunting for that stun for a very long time. Very disruptive right now oh, on yeah. that Spirit Breaker. Oh. I won't find it this time, Boxy, trying to be very, very cheeky on this Spirit Breaker, but not so lucky. Pure, join in there with the Fishman, trying to get this pull off. Denied at least from Zai. 
Alephus will be there. They've got the idol on. It's going to be a fair bit of damage. Boxy going to move in. There's a charge out. Pure. Is he going to get bashed here? Not quite. It looks like instead on to Fishman. There's your bash out. Boxy still getting very lucky. Fishman trying to run. Fishman surely has no way out though. He's just trapped between a rock and a hard place as Boxy. Malifus He'll keep going nice. with Zai. One more would do it. There's your Malifus. Fishman, he will hand over first blood. Zai able to pick it up as now. Pure. Oh, Pure. He's been caught out by Boxy. What's Can we get lucky? Maybe one more. He doesn't get it yet. Pure. He's going to try to run Boxy. Not getting lucky. 17% is what he needs right now as Pure. Still running. Not getting lucky, but the Malifus will do the job. Oh, my God. Two kills out for Zai as in comes Fishman once again. Boxy, this time he'll back off. No crowd favorite bashes to secure the kill. <laughs> yeah, getting them nonetheless. They've just got to shout bash louder. That's all they need. Yeah, just need louder yells. And Boxy, he, he's being impactful again. We saw this in game two where he gets really aggressive. It's not the same sort of aggression as we were seeing out from his Tusk. Much more focused up top. But they have made this lane pretty hard for Pure to just sit back and farm. He's going to take a little bit more time to get going as they go on to mid a bit. Boxy does play it safe. No man on the puck, he has to go base. This is where it starts to feel bad. Make his level six, he's gonna start pressuring the tower. And having to walk back to base is mid. This late means you're probably gonna miss the six minute rune. You're not gonna have TPs to, you know, counter gank in the sidelines if there's any rotation. So he's gonna kind of lock his game up for the next couple minutes or so. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be a little bit tough for a Storm Stormer to kind of contribute to the sides if he does decide to head mid, and he will. Already have the supports here to kind of help out. It almost breaks out there. Fishman, unable to land the nicest nice ice path. Storm Stormer, what? unable to find the regen room, and as Mickey was able to take it on the Ember. As to ward out as well from Liquid, as they are very grouped up in the mid lane. Just kind of wonder what they can do against the puck. The force out a phase shift, but it seems like they're going to have to leave Storm Stormer B. So maybe Boxy can rotate down bot. No, in fact, he's going back up top. See what he can get done here is Matumba. He's the one in danger right now. Toby will go for a chase, but a nice raid jump. Matumba going to duke out the avalanches. Now Insania does come in, but top lane. Charge was there, pure. He goes for the hook instead. Boxy needs to run and will be able to do so as Zai will have his back. Yeah, this bot lane, uh, again, it's very kind of calm lane. They're both hitting each other a little, getting low chip, but we haven't really talked about the Brute that much. And uh, the Brood fills a similar fashion to what they were trying to do with the Naga in the first game. We're just going to buy a lot of aura items. I would, he's probably going to go for a Wraith Pack into a Pipe. They don't really play this, you know, the old school, Orchid, Defusal, BKB. They play as this really tanky hero who just absorbs the map and just pushes you away. So it's going to be more of a... He's playing to just make the map very dark for Liquid. There's no more vision, no more creeps. And uh, it's going to give space for Entity to kind of use this Pudge to farm his eggs, the Puck to kind of catch the picks on the side lanes, and mostly just a kind of a tool rather than like third. Charge out. To win the game. Pure. He targeted. Zai is around. They've got the Midnight Pulse going with the Malapus. There's one bash out. Pure needs to run with oh. the Black Hole. It's going to be cancelled. There was an avalanche there from Katami. Still Mikkei. He's still going to go for the chase. Dream call out now as well. Storm Stormer. The toss out. They break the coil. Can they hold down the Ember? Boxy's back in. He's manning up. Pure's gone. Mikkei. Can he truly survive this? Fishman's the one dropping low. Mikkei's still alive somehow. Katami now. He's the one in danger. A double kill out for Zai and a third kill for the side of Liquid as they're going for more. Liquid are not done yet. They want Storm Stormer and Boxy's going to find him. They'll find a fourth. Oh, man. The, the output right now coming out from Mike. Blades of attack, not even the full phase boots with the Orb Corrosion. It's enough to dig in and they get some pretty good bashes. They shared the damage really well as well coming out there from Liquid, just diving nicely and just ensuring they've got enough in the tank to power through. Visions of what happened last game. They, one team goes to the enemy safe plane, they kind of wrap around the tire, they force a play and you feel strong. You feel like you want to defend, but you just get wiped there. Now, the map is so much in the favor of Liquid that if this Brood can't really kick the Lifestyle out of lane and take the tower soon, where's their map going to be? Yeah, and, and it feels like that, that the timing of that Brood is just contingent on shutting down the map early on in the bot lane, you know, and just preventing the life healer from trying to get that build up, equalize, provide some space for the Pudge. Isn't quite shaping up yet here from Toby All. He, he has been left alone to push in a bit, but it does feel like, as you mentioned, Gunner, Liquid has found enough to kind of compensate for that possibility. We do see the support duo of Entity kind of walk towards bot. It looks like they're going to try to force the tower now that Matu's off the lane. 
Oxy, bot lane, Avalanche will be there. They'll try and secure at least the Spirit Breaker kill. They'll go for a bit of a run, but it's not going to be enough. Entity, able to pick up something. Is now Matumba going to be spotted here by Stormstorm in the Invis rune. Will show himself eventually, just trying to steal away the creep as the Hurricane is going to push back Matumba, but he's going to be okay. What a creep. Yeah, it's creep. It's, it's so scary. Every time you get pushed, I think it only does it when the hero, an enemy hero is near you. Uh oh, you can tell. Mid lane, he's a big target. Charge is going to be there. They've got the dismember onto the M of a pure. He's in such big danger. They'll toss up, try to get him out. Oh. Maybe he does make it. The ice path locking down a couple. Insania will drop as well. Here comes Boxy, though. Onto pure. Bashes out as well. He'll get lucky. Can he do it again? Pure. It won't be enough. Zai will get him. But Zai's going to drop as well. Three for two traders. Kataomi. The toss is up. Boxy, he's got some vision on that high ground. But can he get a charge? It's on cooldown for now. Oh, he's going to go yes. for it. He barely gets it off. Kataomi is going to get dived underneath the tier two tower. They'll find another. Somehow Zai finds that from the grave as well. Stealing away Boxy's little pick off. Very patient there dancing around. It does feel like you find what you want there on Entity though. You save Pure out, you manage to punish. Just a great, the, the Dream Coil and the toss back doesn't quite break this time, but it groups them up for that big move in from Jakiro. It's actually look really scary. Pure lives with less than 100 health. You would think he goes down here, but the Flesh Sheep, also with the heal from the Dismember, the Coil makes it so Ember can't slide a fist to do this little extra bit of damage. I thought Matu was also dead there. It looks really scary for Liquid that everything would just go downhill. It certainly did, like Pure. Barely going down into Boxy's. Boxy just kept the chase going, and eventually with the Eidolons, they had just enough. Such a long, drawn out team fight. Looked like Entity were going to win out that team fight for a moment, but Boxy, he just diving the tier 2 tower as well. Just no fear in the world. You can see the spars on the side of Liquid. I mean, they're still happy with the way the state of this game is going. And would you agree that Entity, like you talked about it earlier, the Broodmother's not having the impact you'd hoped for so far? Uh, I think the laning stage is honestly okay because of how early picked the Brood was. And it's you can see that he just walked over. There's a nice line of webs leading from bot to mid. He goes mid, he kills Zai. So now this bottom half of the map is kind of his. He, this is, he's doing his job right now. He has the cloak, he has arcane boots. He's probably gonna go, I would assume for a Wraith Pact relatively early, or maybe even just the pipe brush. And he's doing everything he needs to, and there's no one to contest him besides Mickey. And Mickey, he's the strongest hero. He doesn't want to go down there and deal with him. He wants to run at heroes like, like right now. They're under Boxy, the Spirit Breaker, toss up, they should have it, but in comes Mickey. And that's a lot of damage with the slide of Fist, but nowhere near enough to keep the fight going. He was all alone. But the Entity will pick up a very nice pickoff for themselves and continue defending that mid T1 tower. So Mickey will stick around, but he doesn't really have so much backup at the moment. Pure is going to run into Matumba. Carry on carry matchup. They are all alone as well. Nobody had to help out as Mickey mid lane. Going to get tossed back, but the coil's not going to break. But the ice path going to lock him down. But now the black hole. Sai, he found two of them and should have enough damage. But Pure, he's going to try to man up, but eventually will drop to Matumba. That, that combination came out. They managed to punish Mickey really well. They had to use the smoke behind their tier one on the right side for it. But then the punishment from Liquid, like that, that black hole in the freezing field, barely enough to kill off Pure, but that does kind of make it feel a little bit more even. We never, even at the same time, the tier two Bach goes down. The tier two is really big. Now he gets outpost. Now he gets the entire side of the map. Now he's pressuring your base. You feel it kind of creeping in. And Toby's doing everything he needs to right now for Entity. The map is just going to get smaller and smaller. And while Liquid don't really need a large map, they need something to get their items. Mickey chose to go BKB first item. He's still really far away. And yeah. Before that, Storm Stormer. It is Angie here. Fishman trying to slow them down with an ice path. The charge is still going to give the vision, but in comes Kadaomi to try and break them off the Storm Stormer. Oh. In comes Boxy. Base Shift's going to save the day for now. Not going to be able to get that charge off. Instead, now they turn back around onto the Spirit Breaker. Boxy, he will drop. Storm Stormer will punish. They keep chipping away at Fishman with this slide of fist, but it won't matter in the end. It seems like Mika is going to have to give up. But in the meantime, Pure, he'll go for a dismember. Matumba, he wants to keep going. There's going to be a TP away. Nothing to cancel. The ice path. It looks like the Pudge is going to be just fine. As now the Ember is in trouble. Fishman setting up perfectly with Stormstormer. They'll find Mickey. Like we said, 
if you have to be happy with Puck, you have to kill them in the coil. Every time the Ember gets coiled, he goes down. It's so hard for him to survive. The Brood walks over multiple times. The Pudge will keep showing up. They just keep grouping multiple cores on every coil. It's never just Puck with maybe one support. It's always two cores, always four heroes together, always get, getting the kills on Mika. Yeah, the coordination coming out from Entity has been spot on. They've just been able to play off the back all these combinations well, no? They're gonna try mid lane. Domi setting up off the Insania with a great ice path from Fishman. Land on two. Still seems like Liquid want to try and force this fight, but can they really get it done? They're going to try and break the gap. Mickey, he'll remnant in. Chain's not going to land on anyone. Toby, he'll turn around onto Matumba. Happy to fight this one out. Look at just the slower Matumba man. He's not even moving right now. On to Katomi, but the ice path again from Fishman. Going to lock two of them down. So hard to catch up when you constantly get locked out by this ice path. And eventually, they will be forced to retreat. It's also just a level two ice path. The yeah. game, the, their amount of slows on Entity, the kite, they have a lot. Of, every hero has a slow stun or silence. And it's just so hard for Liquid to keep walking into the fights very slowly. They they probably need to get this BKB on Ember online. The Slicer needs this Deso so that when he gets the jumps, the hero just dies instantly. They don't have to chase. And he, even Zai, he just probably needs a blink so he's actually able to get in there in the fight. Yeah. It's going to take a little bit of time for them to get that build up. They are going in that exact order as well in the items, of course, but it doesn't feel like Entity is giving them room. You, we talked about that bot a little bit. Toby's just camping there the entire time. You're not able to farm there. There's Matu. Mike again, is eating up the mid, eating up the triangle where he can, trying to go towards that BKB. And it's still a rather even game, 11 to 10, but it just feels like Entity's management of the map just feels so much more suppressive in comparison to Liquid. Dyer are scanning. Yeah, I think the, the gold's not crazy right now for Entity. I think right now the game feels so much more in Entity's favor than the gold is actually showing. It's only a part of the story. It's a lot about how much the map feels really small for Liquid and really big for Entity. They kind of can walk wherever they want and they'll get a kill, they'll get a tower, they'll get anything. And Liquid is just constantly feeling pressure to walk away. Mid tier one tower now under siege. Entity, well, there'll be a charge out from Boxy trying to clear out the spider links. They do do a decent job of it, but Stormstormer just continues onto the tier one and see that there's going to be no protecting it for Liquid. Entity taking even more of the map now. Just doesn't take them too long once they commit. Again, with all the control they have on the map, Liquid's counterplay just feels really limited and they're not really done yet. I mean, they've got the smoke up from Karaomi, does fade now. But you can see they're just feeling so confident to posture in that bot jungle to cut off the side of Liquid and just make it hellish for those catch-up items to come in. Like, we are still 1.2k away from Mika having a BKB. That's such a long time considering he's the one that feels like he needs to be starting to play around here. It's also a very first item. No Maelstrom, his damage is going to be low. Spearbreaker doesn't really provide much damage, only stuns CMs a very low level, so even once he gets the BKB, it's who does he really play with? Is it always Matu and then now you're asking your mid and carry to always be in every fight together? Then who's gonna scale? Top lane, Zai. He spotted Stormstormer in the smoke Look to see if he can pick up this Enigma. Kataomi is gonna be there. Avalanche and Toss to set up into the ice path, but they actually end up missing. It shouldn't matter though. Eventually they should find Zai, though a TP away. Surely he doesn't make it. They're forced to dream code to make sure they get the kill. There is gonna be a pause out from Toby. So they're having a few sound issues, but well, Zai almost making it out there had they not committed the coil. That was a really nice TP. Yeah. Even standing in the macro pyre, it's just, it shows how strong Wraith Pact is right now. All the damage reduction it provides versus all these nukers, it kind of just shuts them down early game. And, you know, just getting that coil out provides you that window to maybe look for a play out. Maybe Mika starts to feel a little bit better without the BKB, hunt down some of the softer support. So Liquid could kind of play off the back, but it's not that much time, to be fair. A very limited window to kind of get that done, which can kind of rest easy knowing that it's going to be a little bit of time until Stormstorm is going to be able to join in for the bigger fights again. On the side of NCT, all their timings are lining up. Ag's finished on the Pudge. Blink finished on the Puck. Pipe is also finished on the Brood, going for that Vlad's and probably Wraith back soon. So. They're really tanky now. They have their initiation from Puck. They have all the damage from Pudge. This is their timing. They're gonna look for maybe just running around the rap, running directly at heroes, killing heroes, and just having no fear on the map. Big knob, they are gonna find Insania. Boxy gonna try and charge in the ulti out as Whoa. well. Insania! He is not going down. Hawk though is gonna find him. Oh, but the infest!
Matumba trying to save the day. It's not going to be enough. Pure, he'll keep going. Matumba between a rock and a hard place now, but does get away. Zai, he'll show up. The Fear of God with that black hole available. They don't want to fight into it. They're going to back off. It'll be a 1-4 one one of the position fives. Mentity, it seems like they're happy with that. Yeah, you really have to appreciate just how confident we were seeing Liquid in some of these players just standing their ground, knowing they've got that opportunity, knowing that the stuns aren't there, and just getting the full dance off with a freezing field. Not the biggest kill in the world, but it does feel nice. Although. Oh, nice coil. He finds him in the tree line, but can they get the damage off? It seems like the Ember, Thunder drop low, Avalanche toss out, they've got enough. Mickey is going to drop. Stormstormer does pick up the kill, now unstoppable on the puck, and now a hook out from Pure. Mid-charge up into the top lane. Foxy's going to try and TP away, but he's not going to make it. More strength away of the punch. Oh, That's a beautiful hook. Everyone just commending their boy. And it's looking scary for Liquid. The BKB is slowing down again and again, and they're just not really getting the connections Radiant's they need. Even on mid, uh, it was, thankfully for them, Coil was still cooldown for 20 seconds, or Matu also goes down there. Yeah, I think the one thing we're seeing different from that game one combo of the Spirit Breaker and Lifestealer is that we're not seeing them be aggressive, right? Like, they're, they're much more satisfied with Maku having to build up. He does have the full Deso up, going for the shard next, so not too different from that game's item progression. It's just they're, they're not able to play around it. And it, without that tool, just relying solely on Mike, it just doesn't feel like the Ember does enough. Like, as you mentioned, no damage with its kind of build up. We're rushing the BKB, BKB not even up yet. Entity has such a massive power spike in comparison. Yeah, they're 5,000 gold now, and all Liquid needs is the BKB, and maybe an Infest kill, and they can maybe change the, the fight. You know, maybe they get one kill, maybe they kill the Puck instantly, and that's it. But Entity, they don't really have a... They don't have a, you know, they don't need a, they don't have a rule set, they don't have a bulletin that they need to follow the bullet points, like, do this, do this, do this, and we'll win the fight. They just kind of can walk at Liquid, I think, and click their buttons and they'll win the fight. It's an impest out for Boxy, they are smoked up. So they're ready to Radiant try and force a fight with the Desolator up now on the Lime Stealer. They want to try and get this timing going. They'll see Fishman. It's just the Jakiro, but they'll take what they can get. That'll be the Desolator reveal for Matumba. They would have probably liked a bit more of a team fight, but they won't be able to find anything. So you do have another timing now. Blink and BKB up on Mikkei and Zai. Yeah, and again, this game, there's no Black Hole cancel through BKB. So once Zai gets uh, towards his BKB timing, it'll be a lot better. But even now, there's it's really hard to Black Hole. There, every single hero can cancel besides the Broodmother. So it has to just be very careful with what his choices are in the fight. And at least now Mickey can kind of cause disruption in the fight and not to worry about his life too much. So kind of have a little bit more impact coming out. Do find it interesting. He is going for a little bit just more durability. Sanja and Aya coming out next. And maybe a little bit more damage, but really just the stat resist. Not being caught out for too long and just zipping around the back line is going to be feeling great. We're at the point in the game, 21 and a half minutes in, where you are pretty geared up now on the Broodmother as well. Full pipe, the great pack of Entity not too far off, and they're going for a smoke play here. They are. With that Radiant Jungle, who do they find? Maybe in the mid lane. You see one. Oh, that's a big Ooh. one. Mirka in nice streak away. Not gonna get caught by the avalanche. Instead, it seems like they want to head north. Liquid now. They'll smoke up as well. In that dire jungle, they've got that high ground advantage. Just cut to Omi. He's gonna get caught out. Infest was there by Matumba. They should find one with the Dream Coil and the toss back. They've got two locked down with the ice pass. Matumba, he's still gonna try and go for the fight. Fishman is gonna get shredded here. And now oh. the black hole! Sai! He'll find two of them! There's no helping coming either! Perfect setup from the Enigma! But where's the damage? Storm Stormer still running away. Mickey unable to finish the job, but this Puck still managed to somehow survive. Now can Luffy get out. Doesn't look like there's going to be a chase from Entity, but it looks so good. Yeah. Black hold on the orb, he catches the Pudge and the Puck, but there's just no follow-up, no damage. Just instant blink out, man. That's going to be a consistent issue for both sides, it feels like, because on the one hand, Entity can't really lock in Mike while he has that BKB. But you also kind of lack that catch for Storm Stormer once he's able to kind of blink around. So both sides kind of have to try to find a way to neutralize each other's highly mobile mids. And I mean, Liquid, as you mentioned, they got a really good black hole, but the follow through just doesn't feel like it's there. Maybe back to that itemization with a BKB, without the Mailstorm, without that lightning procs. It just doesn't feel like you hit hard enough in that window. Yeah, a lot of his job right now is to just play with the Lifestealer. And so, unfortunately for them, I don't think Matu was able to hit the black hole. So, 
the the BKB for Mickey is mostly just because his team needs a frontliner, and the Lifesteer can, but he's always infested. So you need a secondary frontliner to just start the fight, give you vision, so that Spearbreaker can charge while infested. Then you know. Oh, here we go again. Here we go again. Katayomi, he's gonna get caught out. Hook away. Pure is not gonna be able to save the tiny. Now Pure, he's in danger. Matumba right onto the punch. They've got the pause one in control. Matumba, can he keep going? They do at least find box in the spirit breaker, but Matumba, he just keeps going for more. Toby being chased down, charges out. They've got Fishman. It's looking good for Liquid as they do chase down Storm Stormer. Toby still trying to juke. Somehow Insania gonna make it out with his life intact. And now Foxy, he's back in on Toby. The spider in big trouble. Liquid, they want to keep going, but it's just so hard to lock this man down. In comes Mickey. They've got the chains out. They've got the brood mother, and they've basically got themselves a team wipe. The only survivor is the puck on Storm Stormer. That's about it. Four down for the side of Entity. It's a big difference this time around. Liquid managed to group up a lot better, and Entity are much closer together as well. This is them winning out the fight very cleanly without the black hole. And you still have issues catching out Storm Stormer, but once that life stealer is on the punch without anything else to save, it's it's a very simple matchup for Mud. I think win or lose, I think Storm Stormer is going to end this game with one ki one death, maybe two deaths. I think he's always going to be the survivor. He's going to be have some crazy KD, but. Batu, he just he can't be stopped by the puck. He can't be stopped by the pudge. Every everything, even the brute doesn't really do much to him. You saw him; he just latched onto the pudge. They had one stun to cancel the dismember, and then he just stood there, and they have nothing to deal with him. Yeah, it's it's difficult for NST, and I think for Liquid, I mean that must be a great feeling. They lost out a little bit in that fight on the dire side jungle. They take one without Black Hole. They're gonna have Black Hole off in a few seconds as well. So they're free to kind of re-engage now. And you do have the Kaya app on Mickey. So feeling a little bit more damage coming out from Flame Guard, although Boxy. Fishman, you get caught out. Boxy and Toby gonna try and move in, but the Nether Strike not gonna land on the target he wanted. They'll secure the Jakiro. Entity, they are hanging around. It seems like they want to try and force something, but it's a bit of a rough one. Oh, with a nice oh. frame coil, though. Storm Stormer setting up an release in Sania. They've got the BKB up on the Ember, however, as Boxy right in. Kataomi, he's the big target. Matumba, he'll rush through on that life stealer. They'll find the tiny. So it's going to be a two for one trade in the favor of Liquid. One of the cool things is both teams have a Wraith Pack. It's a good item. But for the side of Liquid, they don't have the greatest uh, Wraith Pack hitters. If you're going to ask Seer to do it, you're asking him to use his Rage just to kill the Wraith Pack. But on the side of Entity, all the Spiders will kill it just in one volley of attacks. So you are going to move in. He's found the Ember, but the Malifus not going to allow the Dismember to keep going. Hawk Ooh. is not going to be long enough. Woo. Would have felt the wind on the backside with that hook, I'll tell you. Yeah, it's a close one, and... Going back to that point of the of the rate packs, it, 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 it does feel a little bit harder for Liquid to kind of focus in on it, but I guess it kind of neutralizes when you both have just running, so both of you kind of get the same EHD Radiant coming out. The one thing I'm curious about here, Gunner, is that when you're Ember up against Brood Down, without the Maelstrom, is how annoyed is it annoying to have to bounce around all these spider wings? Because it feels like Mick is losing a little bit of impact just having to jump around so many creeps. The nice thing is he got the flame guard talent at 15. So with the Kaya Sanch, he actually does 120 damage with flame guard. So even if you're just jumping around, you're still dealing a lot of damage. You're making it so you can't be jumped either. So you don't always need to have to BKB that early if you get a slide of fist off. It's just a lot of invulnerability. So it's a give and take. You don't do as much physical damage, but you exist longer. You get to get more spells off. You do a lot of magic damage, so it's not the worst. But it's you know, there's there's there is more impact he could have if there wasn't a brood and he had more damage. Such a close game, number three. I mean, it's a three K advantage to Entity, but it still feels like anyone's game right now. Smuggling's getting so much vision for the side of Entity at the moment. You see Matumba top of the net worth board on that life steal. They just haven't found a way of dealing with him throughout this game. And there's going to be another big smoke up. They've got the black hole. They've pretty much got every spell available. Invest immediately out onto Foxy. Entity, they've got to be so, so careful as Roshan is going to get started. They really want the fight in the Roshan pit with the black hole. It just feels like such a big advantage for Liquid. But in goes the puck. Storm Stormer just in the face ship trying to just get some information for his team as Liquid. They'll keep going. It's used to poke and prod on Liquid. Yeah, the BKB is now finished for Matu, so 15 seconds of 
BKB in these fights. He's in. Katanomi, he tries as well. They're trying to lock down Storm Stormer. They'll find Insania on the CM. Meanwhile, Zai has been caught out. Dreamcore will lock him down. Toby, he can't get close. He's still ticking away. Zai somehow still alive. The orb, it's going to fly through Toby. He'll be able to get the kill. Secure with the swarm. There's now Matumba being chased down. Storm Stormer, has he gone too far in the puck, however? Liquid still trying to kite in and out. Pure, he's happy to oblige, though. He goes right back in, but he's not within range for a hook. Centaur stop on Toby, trying to help out Liquid. <laughs> thankfully for them, they didn't pop the Mickey BKB. He still has his uh, eight seconds. Oh, it's only six seconds BKB now, but can they even contest this Roche now? They don't have the Zai Enigma. Matu doesn't really want to just walk in by himself, and it looks like they're just going to give up the Aegis. I mean, Mickey could try. He might just. Roshan going to go down. Pure, he's got the Aegis. Attempt as Boxy a little bit too close. We'll try to charge away for stuff there as well. Looks like he might just be fine, but Aegis does go the way of Entity. Pure now with a double life. The game gets so much harder for the side of Liquid. That was a cool force. It was by the tiny, it was to cancel the charge. Uh, so it was a nice, it was a nice idea, but just pushes him just past the high ground. And yeah, now Pure has two lives. Matu, he's gonna spend a long time. He does a lot of damage, but punches a lot of health, so he's gonna have to use maybe his entire BKB and Rage duration, and now, when he respawns, he's not gonna have BKB, maybe his Rage is on cooldown, and can he really still fight him after that? Green Coil is there, Mickey. He'll be the one to get caught, Pure. That's a break. nice hook oh. out, he breaks the Coil on the Ember, but now Zai, he will at least find the trade. That'll be Storm Stormer down on one point on both mid laners. Entity still looking to go in. Pure, he'll just jump right in. But Matamba, he's got the BKB usage. It's still Pure. So tanky is the hook. Is not going to land this time. Who wants to keep going, though? It seems like both sides might need a reset. They are both going to back up. That's huge to find on Storm Stormer. A massive kill streak on him. So he does gain another death, you know, not going to say it one death here, still within a very low amount. Nice. But that, that feels really beneficial for Liquid. Sure, you lose Mika, it's not, it's not the best feeling in the world, but that's still a huge gold swing that just helps everyone else oh, on their case. And it did cost them Black Hole here, though. Already infested on the Spear Breaker. Oh, going to try to counter it? They're going to try. Charges there, but Avalanche is out. Looks like they'll walk be, away. Uh, they will get away. Yeah, all the all Zai, Zai is kind of job I think right now. Always thinking is wait very very far back, wait for Puck to jump your your back line quote unquote, which is like the Crystal Maiden, and then black hole the Puck and just kill the Puck. That's all he needs to do. I think asking for a black hole and even more than that is not even necessary. If the Puck goes down, then a lot of free more free reign for Mickey, a lot of free reign for Matu because being silenced without pressing raid really scary. So the Puck is a lot of the big issues right now. Yeah, and just taking care of that problem just feels like Liquid will have a lot to play with after the fact. 24 to 21, still a 4k lead for Entity, but with Matu at the top, it does feel like this lifesaver is starting to really shape up. Basher at the ready now for Matu, so he can kind of get a little bit more control for his team out. Going for the AC next, gonna be hitting pretty nice and hard here with the Deso on top. And then for Entity, I mean, we're at this point now, 31 minutes in, you know, after invading the bot jungle with Toby, after getting this Axe and BKB timing on pure, as we scale towards a more mid to late game timing, it, do you start to feel like Liquid kind of picks up the pace here, or do you think it can kind of keep track with that scaling? I think Liquid, their draft-wise, is going to keep up the pace. I think Mickey's game is not, you know, amazing, so he's not some crazy Ember going to mid late game. And a lot of it's going to be on... Boxy, BKB's there, but Dismember's gonna hold him down. Boxy's still gonna nether strike and is gonna run his way out. Even the drum charge is trying to help him is now. Malifus, Toby, he'll get stunned up. Liquid, they don't want the fight. Or do they? Entity, they're the ones that'll keep going. But Tumba is gonna be spotted out. Seems like they just want to prep for this tier 2 mid tower defense. Middle tower Dangerous tower. position now for Liquid, and I'd hate to make it worse for them, but there is a double damage rune sitting up top, just waiting for the side of Entity. Stormstorm will go ahead and pick that one up. Double Thankfully, damage. it's no really good DD carriers on Entity. It's a lot of spells and kiting and some damage, but it, a lot of it's just these spells, so it's not the worst. There could be worse DDs, like if Batu got at this game for Entity, but... So yeah, I think it's all on Matu right now. Liquid is all their hopes and dreams of this game are on Matu. Everyone else has their jobs, their roles. They're going to have very big impact, but it's pretty much on him whether he can just kill everyone one by one or not. A lot of damage on Boxy. Coil, high five up. Boxy cannot escape. Storm Stormer. A single pickoff down to the bolt lane, and 
with that one down, I mean, he does have buyback available, but you might want to try and force it by forcing in that tier two mid tower. I think they're, they'd probably rather give up the tower than force buyback. He's already trying to get his Shadow Blade, which I think is a really big item. It lets him actually catch the puck with these charges across the map and burst him. And if you ask him to buy back and you don't get probably three or more kills, it's gonna just feel bad for the game. Matumba, he's a big target. Malifus will cancel still. The hook is there. Matumba forced to rage up and try to run. Be able to lock him down long enough. He will back his way out. That mid tier two tower, like you said, they are kind of forced to just give it up. They don't want to commit that buyback on Boxy. So Entity, one step closer to winning up this best of three series against Liquid. Just controlling so much of the map. And now their net worth lead, you'd imagine, does start to escalate a bit faster. Yeah, it does. And again, this next Roche, Aegis just expires now. So now waiting this next three minutes for it to start spawning. That's the big one. That's what everyone's looking at. And Liquid have the tools to fight it. They have the BKB on Enigma. And again, as we said earlier, there's not really cancels, but Entity, they just keep hitting their big timing uh -oh. Octarine on the puck. Okay. That's remnant out. Matumba, he's gonna find Pure. This is a pause one punch. Dismember is there with the black hole. Oh. Zai, he will have none of it, and Pure's gone. They get cool with their pants down. Liquid, is this the opening? Coil is down. They'll hold down the nakes. The life stealer tossed away. Matumba, no he's locked down. No BKB available, oh. though he does get it off, but it's not gonna matter. He is gonna drop. They do trade one for one on the position ones. Stormstormer wants to keep going. After Zai, he does, but Foxy is there with a the charge, trying to slow them down, but Zai is gone now. No buybacks as the Hawk. Insania. He will be the third to go. Entity onto the tier three towers, and they don't have the buybacks on Liquid. Yeah, they don't have the buybacks. Even if they did, Zai not gonna have the black hole for the defense, so it's gonna be basically all down to the combinations with Boxy, Matu, and Mikke. And they are not the fastest pushers in the world here on Entity. Boxy trying to stall. Can they cancel? Avalanche? Oh, Ooh. it's not gonna make it the ice yeah. path. No mana for the Avalanche. So they're onto the T3 towers. You, you kind of ask yourself, how do Liquid stop this? Thankfully for them, uh, they just got back to protection off. There are no creeps in the base, so... They're basically gonna die a little slower, but even just diving again and again. Hawk, not gonna land this time. Boxy riding with the charge, the coil was expended. They just have to back off to the fountain by a bit more time. Zai's up now, but again, he doesn't have the black hole available. It's, you need Batumba here to try and help defend this. Entity, they understand the weaknesses. They'll keep going, but it seems like that'll be enough. As Boxy, he's in onto Storm Stormer. They'll try to chain him up, but it will not land. Storm, he's gonna be just fine to orb away. Instead, it's back in onto Pure. They want the big one. Here comes Matumba onto the pipe with the dismember. Cancelled off by Boxy with a great charge out. Pure dropping way too low. In fact, it's insane if it goes down first, but they've got the punch down. They've got this one as well. No buyback available for Pure. Can they capitalize? Liquid, they'll keep going. Cuts Tommy's down. Zai, has he found Toby? He has. He's got the broodmother in the tree line. It's going to be a fourth down for the side of Entity. The only survivor is going to be Stormstormer. And there's 90 seconds without the pudge. A massive win. And it looked really bad for Liquid as well. Almost to the point where they might have lost Rathbus. But as you said, Gunner, Backdoor was still there. They managed to stall. Boxy's little play charging forward, buying enough time for them to even find this opportunity. Here's the scary part. How long will it take for Roche to spawn? If it's a fast Roche, though, just get it for free. And then the game will be in Liquid's hands. Oh. So a minute, at least Entity has the chance to all respawn and be able to fight again. But as we watch the replay. Uh, it's, a, it's a crazy, crazy replay. I and mean, they stuck around a bit too long, maybe. And it, it's all, it's just boxy, right? He's just constantly charging through these team fights. We saw a great dismember on Matumba, but it just didn't matter because Boxy's always ready with the charge. You'll see it here, I think. There it is, charge immediately. Just no chance to just hold on to the, the life stealer. And you, you've got to argue, I mean, Boxy, he's doing so much work in these fights. He really is. Again, even even down to what he's trying to do on the map, stalling out the pushes, dragging out the creep waves from the tier threes, providing so much time for Liquid to kind of regroup up. And Entity, they're not in a bad state. They just kind of have to rebuild, regroup, save up for buybacks, or hold out for buybacks, especially on Pure. But that will eat into the Aegis or Roche timing here. As it is starting to tick down. Liquid has good control over the pit area. And... This, this is the big one, right? This is the Roshan that kind of dictates what happens next. 
Yeah, now it's been long enough, so they have Black Hole again on the side of Liquid. Liquid Down. kind of has everything right now, and they don't have any buybacks, Ooh. so they have one life on all of their heroes. Look at the win probability right now. Look how close this game is. 50-50 right now between these two, I believe it is. It's, it's kind of insane how close it is to Storm Stormer. Charge is there. They're going to move right in onto the Jakira Matamba. Trying to get the damage off the Dream Coil. Going to lock down three, but they don't seem to mind. They'll keep going. Pure, he's waiting for a hook opportunity, but can't quite, can't quite find one. Matamba, he'll pop the BKB. Pure, trying to move in. Hawk, not there. Boxy, just ready with the chance, just in case. It's Kataomi now with the toss back. Trying to gift the hook over to his punch. Matamba, still running with that rage available. He just wants to get out. Go for a reset once again. They got the buyback out of the Jakiran, that's all they seemingly wanted. Yeah, but they, they used the black hole there from Zai. It's not going to be available. Black hole BKB pop didn't catch anyone out. Entity might have that opening for Roshan if they decide to play their cards right here. Yeah, their Roshan isn't that great. They don't really have like a carry, right? That's going to take the Roshan. Even the Brute doesn't really do, doesn't have the build to just kill Roshan on his own. So they're probably going to look to take a fight and play off of the fear that Liquid thinks they might Roche. They're going to try to play off of making them force a scan and maybe they think they're in Roche. And it's all about the kills now for Entity, whereas Liquid just wants to stall it out and play for the black hole. Here we go. Roshan gets started. Entity, they've got first dibs. Seems like Liquid, nowhere near the Roshan pit. And well, perhaps without that black hole up, they don't want to try and force the fight. Just have to let this one go. The Entity will happily take it away. Liquid. They'll have to sit back and just watch. Shards up, Aegis up. Happy days for Entity. Still, this game is just too close. It is very scary, both teams. I don't think any team is very favored right now. It's only 4,000 golds, 40 minutes in the game. The biggest thing is probably going to be buybacks and location of the fight. So Matu is about to hit his buyback. He'll probably choose to save it. Pure is not going to buyback for two minutes, but thankfully he has the Aegis. And it's very limited buybacks right now. It's pretty much just Mike and uh, on this Mike and Matu right now for Liquid. And that's, that could be the breaking point, right? Like we saw how scary it was when Pure died back as well. It gave a big window for Liquid that they just didn't manage to fully capitalize on. Uh, Gonna have to just wait for that reset on the black ball as mentioned. And it's not too far off, half a minute away. Issue is with two lives in pure that can make things a little bit tougher. Um, we'll see if they find that opening. If you are on entity, like you mentioned that second rush being the big one, what conditions do they have to meet to re-enter that high ground once more? Uh Again, their objective taking is not the best. They're able to force Roche because they know Liquid's just not going to walk up. And again, I feel like they force the Roche more of a come fight us. And when they know they we can, they, uh, they can tell Liquid is just, all right, it's your Roche. We give up, take it. But they're not really going to do that for the base. Enigma's going to be able to defend. Ember's going to chain slight. So it's kind of hard for them to ever actually force to end the game. It's always just about the kills. It's always just about finding them, getting that one kill. Once you get the one kill, then you can go to the high ground. But until then, it's a lot of walking around and trying to secure the map. It certainly became a lot easier to find that one kill with Stormstormer. He's got the uh, the ninja gear now, so just having the smoke on himself throughout this game, just able to find those pickups if they are hanging around. We'll have a look around the bot lane, but won't be able to find one. In the meantime, Boxy, he's finally got that axe up on the Spirit Breaker. Let's see what that can get done here for the teams. And obviously, that, that we've seen how effective these charges have been throughout these engagements. Suddenly, Boxy, he's going to have a very, very low cooldown stun just constantly throughout these fights. Just seems so important Liquid trying to utilize this off, off the Spirit Breaker. Also, you can use it on the Pudge while BKB without having to find a different target in the fight. So, a lot easier time of choosing where to charge and how to fight. I think Entity might actually just wait for the Pudge buyback. It's up to 400 gold, 20 seconds, and... Then at least they have a fail safe. They lose oh, the fight go. terribly. Boxy invested up. They're going to find the punch. There's no buyback available, but they've got the ages. That's the first life gone. Can they find a second, though? There's the black hole available with the what? BKB holding the down Pure onto the high ground, though. Pure, he's still going to drop. That's what they wanted. Liquid, they'll keep moving forward. They'll find Toby now. Fishman, he'll go down to Mickey, who does take him out. Toby, can he get away? He's stuck on the low ground. He's gone. Oh, Liquid, they might be doing something special here. Kataomi, he'll try to rub a Foxy. We'll lock him down once again. Yule Scepter up. It's not going to matter, though. They'll chain him down. Can they get the team wipe? Storm Stormer trying to escape. In fact, they don't even want it. They want to go for objectives now. Into the mid-tier 2 tower they go. There's not many buybacks available. 
Oh man, it, it looks so difficult, but they just focus all in on pure. Managed to work out the two lives. I thought it might be a really difficult fight. You have the level 25 on Storm Storm from a while ago. BKB piercing, Dream Coil didn't even come out. The Ag's usage of Boxy just insane in the middle of these fights. I got really scared for Liquid. The Black Hole uh, pulled pure to the high ground. Matu's stuck in the low ground. I thought he might not die, but thankfully he goes down and the fight just kind of breaks apart from there. Here we go, they're onto the high ground now. If you mind, Mikke, he's got that science device up, so even more control now on the Ember. Things are looking so tough for Entity in this game number three. Liquid suddenly so close to pulling off the victory they've been looking for. They're onto the top lane, one racks up. Entity, how do they defend this? It's so tough. They're saving their buybacks, they'll use the glyph instead. They'll buy a bit more time. Stormstormer. Just preparing to initiate. They'll try onto Matumba, but it's a bit of poking and prodding for now. Coil committed as well. Maybe a little bit early, but Kataomi could think about the toss back. Rage is there, however. Matumba, he's going to be just fine. It seems like they're going to go back and address the bottom lane instead, as it is pushing in at the moment. Yeah, the coil's not too long of a cooldown. They don't feel bad, and at least they force him away, right? They lose one side of Rax. It's not the worst. They don't force any buybacks, and now the game. Slightly in Liquid's favor, Entity still, you know, they can take take these fights, they can still destroy the life slayer, but now it's scary. You know that your Pudge is killable. Every time you know you're this really tanky hero and he feels vulnerable, you just lose so much of just mental pressure that you have on the enemy team. Zania, be okay to TP out. Liquid back onto their high ground, one racks up. It's still anyone's game. I mean, it's a 6k net worth advantage, 34 to 27, Radiant 45 minutes in, but it really just feels like anyone can pull off this victory. Just one decent team fight. No buybacks available, and suddenly you're in trouble. Yeah, I think the one thing that makes this difficult for Storm Stormer now, you've got the full hex up on Mika. He can just come in, get that instant control the team needs. They're not under as much pressure for Zai to actually land that black hole onto the puck. As we've seen before, you land it on pure, it's a worthwhile target as well. And Mika can just do what he needs to do in this game. Maybe only slot left is that Orc Corrosion to swap out, otherwise you're starting to get fully slotted up here. Boxy, he's the real menace. Yasha up, what he acts, and he charges like a madman, the cooldown so low. They have to watch that combination. At this point, Matumba is more than happy to just stick around with Boxy now. I think Mike has done an amazing job this game. He had a really rough early game. He goes for BKB and he struggles to get there. But now after BKB, he goes for the Kaya Sanj, he goes to Ags, and he's just done so much in these late game fights. Just this itemization uh, just kind of is enabling them to take these fights later in the game. Especially the Sheep, I think is going to just wreck havoc in the fights. Here we go. Uh, triangle and some Boxy. Just going to go ahead and adjust the free wave. Storm Storm. Oh, that's a big one. Tex is oh. out. They'll lock him down, but do they have any follow up? They do not. Not for now. Inside the vice just so scary for the puck to have to play against. Sure, you've got the A on disc, but even with that, once it's down, it's. Oh boy, it, it, it's just too too frightening here for Storm Stormers. They will show mid lane. Fox, you're going to charge right in onto the Jakira Matumba. No fear in the world, but Pure, he has the shards up. Go eat away. Yeah, hey, just now popped though. That's Stormstormer's one saving grace in the fights. Can they keep going? Seems like they might. Liquid hanging around, but they don't have the vision. They'll head back. At least for now. Yeah, they managed to bait out the Dream Pro once more. Boxy. Stormstormer. They want to try and go. Hook is there from Pure. Try to relocate this Broodmother, but they've got the Malifus. Hobie's in big trouble, but there's the Eat again. Out. Black Hole is there from Zai. He found the puck. He's in so much trouble, and Boxy with the charge again! He's gonna find the pause one punch! Buyback is there immediately, Entity, they need to be so careful! This game, it's falling out of their hands! Liquid, they'll find another! Toby is down, but Buyback immediately, as now they jump in, Dismember is there, but no, the charge! Boxy, he hasn't had enough yet! Matumba onto Pure, it might be a tieback, it will be! They've got the punch down! Entity, all oh, the chains out, oh. Mickey, he'll lock down a couple more of Zai, gonna move in, they've oh. got one down, they've got Mickey down, but they need Get Matumba, he's the big target, Mickey, who are in the back forward, Entity, they are not giving up yet, they want to keep fighting this one out, buybacks have been expended though, and that'll mean Liquid are the ones that need to try and find the fighters, there is a charge, Kataomi, he was the target, but they do cancel. So Pure's down with that buyback for basically a minute and a half right now, can Liquid capitalize? They still have the black hole too. He has yeah. a refresher, he popped the refresher, has a second one ready, and there's no buyback for the punch. Like we said, he just dieback in the fight. The buybacks 
for Liquid didn't feel amazing. The Ember and the Spirit Breaker are both forced to kind of die back. So now Entity, you know, they can look at this as a win condition, but as of now, it's looking really scary. Yeah, they can just aim for the high ground, threaten with that black hole. And if, if anything comes up, if they don't feel safe, there's always the Roshan in 20 seconds as well. Not the longest respawn to wait for left as Matu. Gonna go in, tier 3 tower, gonna be under siege, Boxy. We'll get stopped by the ice path. And they go though, the tier 3 more important is no, never oh. mind. They want Fishman with the toss back. Mickey, he just fought back. Charge again, Boxy, gonna buy a bit of space. Oh. Now the black hole, Zai, he'll hold down a couple. They've got the puck, Storm Stormer, so much trouble, he's gonna go down. But he does have buyback. In we go again. This will be the final lives here for the side of Entity, it's Liquid. They'll find a secondary racks. Do they want to go for a third right here right now? They've got 30 seconds without the punch. It's so hard. It feels so hard to defend. Machu just does way too much damage. He has the full abyssal finish now too. They, they can't kill him. He kills them by himself. And uh, what does NCD do for some? Yeah, they, they still have a little bit of a window to go Roshan if they want to, although Respawn is coming out on pure, but they have to repair these lanes. Not gonna have an easy path outside uh, for Entity to kind of contest. And they're going for it. Ma Matu straight into Roshan. Free Axe along with a cheese now on Roshan number oh, three. And a double damage. And a double damage every single time there, Mike. Every single time. Gaben's blessing is what we call it. Toby, he's gonna move in. Roshan in trouble. Can he do something about it? He can try to sneak his way in with the ice spot. They need this Aegis there. Wake up, Toby jumps in. Matamba! He does out click them. His hands are way too fast. Katomi in danger. Yule stuff trying to run. Will force stuff to the high ground, but the chase is there. Mickey not done. Bouncing all across the map. The tiny is still alive. Pure trying to save the day, but now he's the one in danger. He hasn't got buyback. He needs to run. The BKB about to wear off Boxy. Oh. He's gonna hold him down. This could be it. They don't have their pause one punch. Toby in danger. Meanwhile, Mickey being controlled up here by the puck by the Jakira, but he's just man fighting on oh, the jack. Dang. Meanwhile, Toby on the high ground in so much danger with the Crystal Nova. Fishman, he's also going to go down up north. They take him out. The only survivors are Toby and Stormstormer, and they've got to try desperately to try and save this situation. But in goes the chase onto the top racks once again. This mega creeps available very soon if Liquid can find it. They've got their hands up. They're feeling confident. Boxy, he's going to find the puck, but Stormstormer is okay to back off. Man, it's, it's just coming all together now for Liquidy. Take that opportunity in the Roche. My heart. The snatch of Matu, giving them all the room they need to end up, to end this game. If that goes to Pure, it could end differently. Divine Raid Pure for Matu. Oh, here Doesn't we go. Doesn't feel necessary, but it'll just reach the end of the game a lot faster. They want to put a little in this game right here, right now. Tier 4 towers under siege. Hardly any buybacks. They've got to try and fight this one entity. It's just such a tough ask. Such a hard defense. Liquid, men's of business. They'll keep going for the T4s onto the Ancient with the Divine Rapier. There's no way to stop them. Liquid, they'll be proceeding through the GG's call. The GG is called. What a series we have witnessed here between these two. Entity, they put on such a performance, but Liquid, the comeback in Game 3. I don't know how they do it, but they make it happen. Yeah, they play so well in that Game 3 as well, right? Like, there were a couple of rocky moments. Mika, it looked like he struggled a bit, rushing that BKB, not having enough damage but then they just tie in together. They execute as a team to a very high level. And th this item build, especially in Boxy with the Act, it, it made a massive difference in getting a lot of those fights going. Yeah, I think, uh, especially Matu, I think Matu played a phenomenal game. He was always in the right positions. He was always infested in Boxy and they were getting kills together. Boxy, great early game as well, but just I think Matu, just the way he, he was pretty flawless, honestly.